first quarter underway. Here's Tim Lane. It is the Saints and the Dogs. Coming to you for Chemist Warehouse. The Dogs to the Footscray end and they get first use. Bontem Pelly drives them forward. Fisher's in the way for St Kilda. He's monstered to the ground. And umpire Luke Farmer steps into ball it up about 35 metres out from the goal front. Tali has gone to Rewalt. Fletcher Roberts has gone to Bruce. So Cordy, decisive tap, 30 metres out. Dogs are into attack. Stringer emerges, tackles, handballs into a pack of players. I don't think it's going anywhere. Nunes involved, stopping the dogs going forward. That was Dalhouse. So the dogs have got a 20 metres in front of their goal. goal. No score yet. Minute gone for the Chemist Warehouse. So a second ball up. Armitage came away with it and he got a hand pass off and the Saints are uh, out of trouble. Stevens clears long through the middle. No one back. Rough head, the first man there for the Bulldogs. Takes it out towards the uh, city side. Schneider arrived, knocked it away from Picken, who just might have relaxed there. Picken fights on, lays a tackle, brought Bruce down. Bruce got it though, courtesy of a Montagna hand pass. Gave to Armitage. Now Schneider missed those couple of shots late last week. He doesn't miss here. He slots it to Jack Stevens, who marks a 35 out on a 45 degree angle. It was coolly and clinically set up under pressure by the Saints. And as I said last week, so impressive is the Saints, but their pressure. I know we're only a minute 24 in, but they're going to try and bring the heat to the Western Bulldogs early in this game. They've been starting well in their matches. Just need to play out four quarters. That's been the big query on them. Stevens kicks it from 40 and hits the post on the far side. So a disappointing result, bringing a groan from the Saints fans at Eddie Had Chemist Warehouse scoreboard. Saints one behind, Dogs haven't hit it yet. So Murphy kicks it to himself, runs straight up the middle and goes to the centre of the ground. Two on two battle there, Dempster from the side, knocks it down. The Dogs, they emerge with the football this time. It's been moved on, Cramery middle of the ground. Gets it to Kobe Stevens, what a nice pass. It's Honey Church in stride, plays on, scrambles it forward for... Now, did that just touch the padding? The post. Yeah, one behind. So good chances both sides in the first minute and a half. That's for the Chemist Warehouse. One behind each as we go around the ground. Sam McClure. Goal to Jack Rewalt and the Richmond Footy Club eat, sorry, get closer. 14 to 13. 10 seconds left before quarter time. Saints bring it back in. Montagna's got it for a second time. Hand pass for Armitage. Bad bounce for him. He had to wait for the footy and uh, was tackled. His hand pass is over the line. There'll be a throw in between wing and half forward for the Dogs going to the Footscray end in the opening quarter. It's one behind a piece. And we've had just under three minutes as the ball is hurled into play. Front position to Longer against Cordy. The ball falls under a pack. And I reckon there's only one outcome there. Umpire Farmer circling. No, He's on the statue, Tone. Yeah, that's the statue. It's holding the ball. So a second one came. Kobe Stevens of the dog gets it. Handball to the runner on the outside. Johannesson against the boundary line. Squares to within 20. Dylan Robertson, though. Nice defensive. Clean pack mark that time, Lordy. Safe hands by the Saints defence. It was. Revolt getting his first touch here. But we'll see how Bonta Pally copes today. Maverick Weller being very aggressive in his tag of him. Revolt up the line. In fact, he crossed the line. It's out on the full. A free kick to Bontempelli, who just happened to be at the end of that ball's arc. He's between wing and half forward, and the dogs will come again. Still no goal. Bontempelli swings it to within 20 of goal with the left. Cordy up, revolt there as well. Got his hands on, couldn't mark. Webster a quick kick, but it's going to come back because Bontempelli's on the end of that. He has a look, and he delivers. And uh, Wood has taken the mark. 45 out straight in front and has a chance to kick the first goal of the day. And I don't reckon too many people would have fancied that uh, Eastern Wood, he got the winning goal last week. Did he not up in Sydney? It's the second time the Saints have just blazed away coming out of defensive 50. They need to be able to run the ball a bit better. They look up, they haven't got anyone there. It's not okay in in current day of fail just to slam the ball in the boot. You need to be able to feed it. They could go back to back here. Last goal last week, first goal this week. 47 out when he kicks. It's out right-ish, but not so far. But he doesn't produce the maximum. And the Bulldogs are 1-1-7. The Saints are one behind on the Chemist Warehouse scoreboard. Uh, Sam McClure in the pregame touched on 
their pressure they provide inside forward 50. It's where they're up in the top, t uh, is it probably the best in the competition with tackles and also repeated inside 50s. Well, already it's five inside 50s to one in favour of the Western Bulldogs early in the game. Yeah, and two of those inside 50s from turnovers in their yeah. forward half, Lloydie, so they're just bringing that same pressure that they've brought all under Luke Beveridge. Chemist Warehouse Scoreboard, home of real brands, real savings. The Dogs, 117. St Kilda one behind uh, Sam that quarter time score was it a point lead to North Melbourne no a late goal to Ben Brown so a 7 point lead to North Melbourne 3-2-20 the Tigers 2 one 13. as around the grounds for the AFL Premiership Club best matches best seats guaranteed AFL Premiership Club if you're looking to get to the footy in a bit of style Dunstan uh, kicked at about 5 metres but goods of the dogs through the head high contact one at middle of the ground Robert Murphy from defence kicks it wide the half forward Boyd in front Good defence from Delaney. Savage gets back. A little handball. Back pocket. The Saints will look to get it out of bounds. They do. As Dempster falling backwards. It was a gear. He just falling. That was Dempster falling backwards. Unable to control it. Forward pocket right. Foots grey in. Dogs into attack. Lead by six points. Tossed back into play from the back. Cordy taps. Schneider tries to grab the ball. 30 out from the Dogs. Goal. Packer players crash it again. No room to speak of for move. Cordy that time. And Nathan, the umpire, wants to toss it up 30 out in front of the dog's goal. Hey, Brownie, I know you can't have too many defensive players, but Murphy, he's just setting up, doing what he wants. There's no defensive player with him at all. Long up, brings it down. Armitage again doing heavy work. Got it to Schneider. Quick kick. Finds the Bruce on the bounce. Had to hand pass it in a hurry. Saints work it through Revolt, who's forced backwards. He gives it off to... Um, who was that for? Some killer. It was McKenzie. Second gamer who was tackled, holding the ball. Dogs free kick. They work it forward to the 50. It's near the boundary, though. It's scrappy. It's over. There'll be a throw-in right half forward, just outside the Dogs 50. They lead 1-1 to St Kilda one behind. Spot on Lloyd if you're going to allow Robert Murphy just to play that roaming role across half back he is going to cut you up more times than not. Seven gone on the Ray White clock first quarter dogs at half forward and lead by six points again it's scrappy it's been the order of the day so far now it's sort of hurried inside 50 for the dogs Honeychurch goes to ground little kick into space oh chance here this time round the body Rovat is it going to be a mark for the dogs in front it is and playing in front, Tom Boyd has got a 15 out. What I've enjoyed about the Bulldogs forward setup so far, every time the ball's been a long ball in there or kicked to a lead, Stringer's gone back and tried to block for Boyd. On that occasion, the players were uh, adhered to it and they were so worried about their own men and being blocked that they stuck to their own men. So that allowed Tom Boyd the one-on-one -on -one time. So well done to Stringer. Slight angle, 10 metres out for the Dogs. Second goal and a 12-point lead. Eight minutes gone, first quarter. Tom Boyd comes back. Oh, and he's tried to... A little bit too much on it. Pushed way left. 1-2-8, the Dogs. One behind the Saints. Seven-point lead to the Dogs. Eight minutes gone. Chemist Warehouse scoreboard. The Saints bring it back into play. Robertson chipping in. Webster up the flank, finding Delaney. Still just inside the defence of 50. 1-2-1 to one behind. Wasted opportunity by Boyd. Kick not quite carrying to the wing. Off a pack, uh, the Saints, Dempster has it. Feeds to McKenzie, hand pass inside. Is an error, taken away by McRae for the Dogs. Long ball, Bontem Pell, and now it's Boyd again. Taking the mark directly in front this time, 20 out. And surely will make up for his kicking error a moment ago. Tony, I wrote a story about him about three weeks ago, about I'm just not seeing the glimpses in his game that you'd like to see for such a prize recruit, but... In the last two, three weeks, I think the Hawthorne game it was a turning yes. point for him where he's started to show those signs they'd be wrapped about. Straight in front, comes in, and he's missed again. Now, what happens to a man's mindset yeah. when oh. that happens? That is a horrible start. Especially when the pressure has been brilliant. Eight to one inside 50s. They should be three goals up. Got to take your chances. Eventually, I'll, the Saints will come. I'll be more interested in how he attacks the next yeah. mark. Not so much his next kick at goal, but the next ball he goes for. So, Fisher trying to fight. He's kicked it to the man on the mark in the back pocket. Coming there. Oh, gee, was that holding on Cramery? Umpire said no. Nunes defensively receives a handball. They can run it out. McKenzie involved to Nunes. Over the top to Weller. Now, they're working along the city wing this time, and the handball fell out of bounds. So, the Dogs applying as much pressure yeah. as the Saints at the moment. 
that is nine minutes gone. Ray White clock. The Dogs 139. Saints one behind. Tim in a game that probably had a few more errors in it than what we might have expected. Yeah, but the Dogs are putting on fierce pressure up there and preventing St Kilda from getting out without a heck of a struggle. They should get out here. Nunes receives from Montagna, who's their set-up player, and he started well. Nunes kicks to Fisher, who running off the back half, collects, and the door's open here for the Saints. Fisher to Schneider, who slots it into the 50. Schneider slots it into the yes, 50. And uh, on the lead, the mark is taken for St Kilda by Loney with the man on the mark 49 metres out. He doesn't fancy himself from there. He loops it back to Schneider, who marked. There was a moment where he thought he could play on. He gives off a hand pass to Billings, who runs in, and he's missed. There was a man coming at him face on, and he just caused him to hook the ball a little. And so there have been bad misses at both ends of the ground. The Dogs 1-3 lead the Saints two behinds on the Chemist Warehouse scoreboard. And you wonder, Brownie, with a Snyder, wanted to pass off You're right. after last week. Should have gone back and kicked that. So, yo, Hannanson brings it in for the Dogs. Halfback, Medallion, club side. The Dogs, can they move it quickly this time? Rovat battles hard on the wing. Support arrives. Cramery got a handball off to Murphy. who released it quickly. Now, Clay Smith's got a chance if it bounces up. Didn't quite force to retreat. Give it back to Rovat on the wing. Dogs by seven points. Packer players again crashing. Good on his contest at the moment. And another stoppage takes place right in front of the 3RW commentary box. What Murphy's being able to do at the moment and all of this year is hit the ball at 100% speed. He is going flat out when he receives it. It's like a winger in rugby union just hitting it flat out. His timing's perfect. Dockside wing, St Killer's ball. Stephen tackle was uh, given the benefit of any doubt by the umpire. Bulldogs work it clear here and Pickens got it. He feeds to Dixon on the burst. Long ball, Boyd one out in front, got first hand onto it. Delaney did well. Wrestling matches, the ball hits the deck. It's only 15 out from the dog's goal. Pack around it now and the umpire will come in and ball it up. Yeah, they're having a crack here, the Saints, but on these numbers, yes, there's seven clangers to zero. The Saints... The inside 50s, nearly 10 to 8 to 1. You're just not sure this is sustainable for the Saints. All but... for blamey Saunders yeah. here. Ball in the back pocket for the Saints. Dems to the handball. Quick release that time. All right, Armitage toward defensive 50. They're going to get out again. Armitage, a second involvement. Revolt working hard more in defence at the moment. To be fair, the ball hasn't been up there. Webster, long time to get rid of it for the Saints. Hung on for it for too long. Umpire said the high contact was drawn. So St Kilda get a little break. Uh, Lloydie, the Dogs seemingly on top by plenty, but they only got seven points to show. How is St Kilda hanging on to them at the oh, moment? It's more that they're not... Uh, I think St Kilda are all just flooding back, to be honest, Tone. So, yeah. you look, you mentioned Revolt. He's in the last line of defence. This is their issue. They've all got to now get back and uh, get in their forward half. I've done well yeah. here, and uh, uh, Dempster running out of defence kicks to Geary, who's on the attacking side of the wing. Montagna, I think, might have just snuck through the interchange gate to run and receive from 60 out, centering ball, hoping for Bruce two against him. Bulldogs did it well, Cordy got back, took the mark, fed off by hand, and Talia clears long. Yeah, might be coming back in but a moment's time, as Armitage again, touch number about five or six, but his kick missed going forward, Webb of the Dogs takers. Lucas Webb, game number four, another one of these young promising dogs to a contest on the wing don't like the kick Saints have the numbers on the city side should be able to clear Armitage had it lost it goes again Armitage knocks it forward 10 metres ball out of bounds barely in the Saints half the one thing that's evident so far Lloydie is the chain of handballs or the kick through the midfield is done in the middle of the ground for the Bulldogs which sets up easier inside 50s the Saints every time they've been in have gone right around the edge Chemist Warehouse scoreboard 14 minutes gone first quarter the Dogs by 7 points and the Dogs win it on the wing Johannesson breaks away draws pressure, feeds by hand to Picken, it's wide open up forward again, Stringer brought down Bulldog fans want a free, they don't get it and they're outraged, Dempster mops up for the uh, Saints fed it off to Roberton, they work it around by hand to Stephen who really has to press the accelerator there, did okay, to Savage back to Stephen, quick pumping hand pass, and Nunes is clear now, runs to the middle of the ground nowhere to go, his pass block has to give a hand pass, hand he's gone for holding it, it's a bulldog free kick, rough head shaping the play on the umpire says it must come back the doggies have got it on the wing hey, Tone, that's that lack of forward structure again he's ran too far because there's nothing to kick to and this pressure of the bulldogs is sensational so Webb to take the free kick 
wants to kick it high to a contest inside 50. The dogs here, Bottom Pally the target. At the front of the pack is a chance. McRae just worked his way through a bit easily. Hits the point post on the full and ball runs out of bounds. On the back of what you said there, Lloydie, Nick Rewald's played enough footy now. He must realise that the lack of structure right now is hurting his side. He doesn't need to be up in the defensive end helping out. He needs to be at centre-half forward, giving the option when they win the ball. That's 15 right. minutes gone. Dr Peter Larkins, please, for the Sage Institute of Fitness. Yeah, good timing. Nick Rewald's on the phone having a chat. Brownie at the moment, so you wonder whether he's getting a bit more instruction to reprogram to uh, breed the target. Dempster clears long, off hands the ball over the line, throw in high at left half forward for the Dogs. I just look even now in modern day footy, the structure here, every player. Josh Bruce is the only one who's really going to receive the footy as a saint because he's 50 metres away. The rest are just right up at the contest. 1 3 to 2 behinds. The Dogs lead on the Chemist Warehouse scoreboard. Goods has got it off the ruck contest. Now a hand pass has worked out to Picken, who swings a left footer, did well under pressure, got it to a pretty good spot. No one able to mark, 25 out from the Bulldogs' goal. And again, the Bulldogs prize the ball away. Honeychurch over the top to Stringer, who runs in and goals. Oh, they are squeezing the life out of the Saints down in their front half of the ground. And on the Chemist Warehouse scoreboard, the Bulldogs are 2 3 15. And killed it two behind. Sam McClure brought up a great stat before the game that they turned the ball over against their opposition more times than anyone in the forward 50. And Sam, it's come to fruition again. Two of their goals so far have been from putting pressure on, getting the ball back in. They do rank number 17 and 13 for uncontested contested footy, but a pure stat where they just put pressure on, they're able to kick goals from it. Yeah, and six already, six turnovers or possession gained, if you like, in their forward half. And as soon as you're turning the ball over in the front half of your uh, forward line, it's an automatic inside 50, so it puts immense pressure on their position. All of those stats, Sam McClure, for Blamey Saunders here is world-class hearing technology. That's done right here in Melbourne with Dr Elaine Saunders. Out of the middle of the ground. Oh, well won by Cramery. Knocked it to Kobe Stevens. Pushes it into the path of Dixon. He tried to give it up, but well read by Savage at halfback. Goes quickly to Dempster to Nunes. Sidestep to tackle. Able to compose himself. Savage turned his back on him and he handballed nowhere. Dogs turn it over in at the middle of the ground. Kobe Stevens involved again. Handball Wood. Now Roughhead's got a chance and he goes long inside 50 for the Dogs. And once again we saw Nunes not knowing where to go to when he was clear with the ball. Geary off the pack. Go to Armitage. Back to Geary. They're under the pump though. They're getting very nervous. Well ahead. It brought down in a furious tackle by Dixon. And the Bulldogs are going to win the ball back again. Rough had a quick kick into the 50, but a good saving mark by Hickey, who realised uh, he had to seize the moment, and he very quickly swings it wide and back to the back pocket. Fisher, wide. Now, here's a chance for McKenzie. City wing, magnificent kick. Hits him in stride. Left foot round the body. Schneider knocked it forward cleverly. Will it bounce for longer? Long way down. Inside 50. Goes to the deck. Bruce picks it up to Schneider. Handball and out wide. Loney sidesteps. Dunstan uh, is surrounded by three dogs defenders. Murphy doesn't get tackled. Holds the ball high. Sidesteps. Full back. Pick and the handball. Goes to McRae. Has a bounce inside 50. Kicks it long to the wing. Medallion club side. Two on two battle. Dixon's got it for the dogs and he's off. And he is off. He gives off a little hand pass under the pump. But Goods gives it back in the Dixon direction. Had a man coming the other way and the ball's back into a contest. In fact, there's a pack converging. Hickey's got it. Gang tackled to the ground. Oh, the Bulldogs are savage men. They force a the ball up here. as a some killer player down. Savage. 25 off the ball. Dr. Peter Larkins for Sage Institute of Fitness. Yeah, three savages in the one set. Savage, but this was Shane Savage. Just got hit pretty high. The doctor's out with him. He was laying face down, talking to the doctor, but it, it looks pretty groggy to me uh, coming this way, uh, Tim. So I think it's a hit round the head area. Chemist Warehouse scoreboard. Dogs 2 3 15. Saints 2 behind. North Melbourne, uh, small leaders at quarter time. I'll get to a score in a moment. Dogs win it from the stoppage on the wing. Kobe Stevens, long to Boyd, unable to take it. A bit easy that time. It was Nunes trying to get out of trouble. But again, a ball's just been handballed to a pack of players at defensive 50. Sam, if we could take uh, that score before Nathan. Seven point lead to Richmond, 3 4 22. The Tigers 2 3 15. Nunes suffering some real uh, pressure on the first tackle he got. Now he can't get rid of the ball. He's in two minds all the time. Stringer gets a kick from the uh, ball up here. It's to the behind post and it bounces over the line for a throw-in. Bullock's having some big wins at the stoppage. Is Ace Cordy getting his hand onto the ball in the ruck contest, sort of thought. Sam, if it's not his hand, it's somebody else's. 
and they're working it clear. No, Cordy only with two hitouts, Tim. He might have got a third one there, although it falls to Montagna, who was immediately tackled and had to hand pass defensively. Dogs win it back. Good snap to goal and kicks a good guy's goal of the day. In fact, we'll give it the plural of goods guys goal of the day and the dogs are 3-3-21, St Kilda two behinds. Tell you what strikes me about the dogs, they are singing from the same hymn yeah. book and they they know what they're doing. You're right, and Tone, there was probably that tackle you thought where Nunes got out too easy, it was Tom Boyd, probably the first effort in the uh, first 20 minutes of play where a player hasn't committed hard enough like they should to a tackle, but... This is brilliant. Like, tackles can, at times can be overrated in football, but when you're tackling in your forward 50, that's the most important tackle in the game, and they are just relentless here. Uh, you know, they've already got seven tackles to zero in their front half, which has created how many inside 50s now for this first quarter? 15 seven? to 5. 15 to 5. Seven, so, in, seven tackles inside forward 50 to zero uh, for the Dogs. Some teams wouldn't get that in the whole match. For blamey Saunders, here's... Saints win the ruck work. Dunstan goes off the ground. It got him inside 50 at pace, though. Well read by Woods to Murphy. Johannesson back to Murphy. Runs to centre half back. Wants to go wide and get a runner out there. Kicks it beyond Goods. Gives McKenzie of the Saints a chance to pick it up. Handball to the feet of Revolt. Tackled by Murphy. Released to Dunstan. Illegal disposal. Should be a dogs free at half back. Advantage paid. Talia goes to the wing on the league. The dogs have got the football out there. Tory Dixon. Defensive side of the wing. Chemist Warehouse scoreboard, 22 gone first quarter. The Dogs 3-3-21, St Kilda 2 behinds. They are playing superbly. Dixon behind the wing over on the City side. Wanted to play on. Went back, kicked over the man on the mark. Boyd crashed in from behind and took the mark. Well, if that was how he attacked his next yeah, contest... That was his next was one, Tim. It was his next one. You've got to be happy with that, too. Luke Beveridge will be sitting up there going, OK, the young fella's missed two goals. He could have dropped his head, but the next attack on the ball was an absolute ball burst. Oh, oh, that was a cracker of a mark. He kicks into the 50. Cordy had to go to the spoil. A lot of St Kilda jumpers around that footy, and they come away with it. Armitage floated a hand pass, and McKenzie's got it. The second gamer breaks away, draws pressure, and then feeds to Armitage, who kept coming, and then helps him out, and it's kicked to Revolt, who takes a mark Who's on the Who's he going to kick it to, though? Nothing thought of him when he took the mark. Now there's a 50, though, and that is going to advance his cause, well, precisely 50 <laughs> metres. The man on the mark will come within the inside the 50 by about 10 or even a little bit more, and that's giving Revolt a shot at goal. Nick, we talk about goal kicking in footy. This is one man who has an excuse at times because of his work rate, and we've spoken about it. We feel he's getting too far up the ground, but he's probably covered two or three kilometres, you know, even more so in this first 22 minutes of football. So it's a big kick for them because they look out of their depth in this game. They need to make every kick count. That sums it up well out of their depth. Revolt comes in, lovely low straight kick. Saints have their first. Welcome back, champ. Bulldogs 3-3, three, three, St Kilda 1-2. The margin 13 points for Chemist Warehouse. With 4 minutes 20 to go on the Ray White time clock, around the ground, Scoot McClure before Nathan Brown. And the scores are all square, 3-4-22 apiece. North Melbourne, Richmond, 10 minutes left, second term. He's a perfect example, uh, and we spoke about Travis Cloak before the game. His goal-kicking routine has changed significantly. He now sits his head right over the ball. He crouches right over the ball. In his last 18 months of football, Nick Rewald has been a very good set shot at goal. How's uh, Shane Savage looking, Doc? He's looking at the video of his own incident, Lloyd, at the moment with the doctors. The decision to make whether to sub him still, it's definitely a head injury. They're trying to work out if he needs the 20 minutes, so uh, he still looks a little bit groggy. That's all for the Sage Institute of Fitness, Dr Peter Larkins. The dogs win it from the middle. Break, ace, Cordy. Tumbles one to full four. G. Bottom Pelly, front of the pack, almost took the mark. Oh, under awful pressure that time, Webster slung to the ground. 30 out from the dogs' goal. We get a stoppage, Nathan. Ball to be tossed up. Dogs in very good position here. Ace Cordy's uh, second efforts and third efforts today and most of this year have him in this team ahead of Will Minson. Cordy, the tap. Nunes, the little kick. Dylan Robert and the Saints defensively pick it up. Can swing it wide to McKenzie. Draws a man. Well done, Goods, though. Didn't take his eye off the ball, Matthew. Provided the smother and the dogs get the stoppage. Half forward right, 52 out from their goal. They're all just feeding off each other. They've all bought in, as Tim just touched on. Uh, they haven't got the scoreboard reward for it in this first quarter. Uh, but apart from that, they've been uh, sensational. Couldn't have done much more.
13 points the margin. The Bulldogs way longer. Beats Cordy here. Held him at bay with one hand and brought it down with the other. But at ground level, the dogs are hungry. Ball comes clear of the pack, not cleanly. It's picked up and uh, worked forward by uh, Wood, but only a few metres, and there's still a pack around it. And the umpire might have to intervene here. He will, Justin Schmidt, about 60 out from the Bulldogs' goal. 3-3 to 1-2, the dogs by 13. Three minutes, 34 to quarter time. Ray White, they've got the know-how. Countdown clock from the number one real estate agents in Australia. It's scrappy at the moment. The dogs have lost ground to the middle. Bruce comes through, allowed to proceed that time by Weller, doesn't pick it up, been shoved out, Clay Smith to Webb, spent it before he got it, half back, McKenzie slung, loses in the tackle, Clay Smith, brave, handballs to a running good, who toe pokes it off the ground, trying to get to Rovat, Nunes again, by G's been in the plate, tackle, pinned to the ground, the young fella unable to release it, just for the record for Blamey Saunders here, how many plays has Jack Nunes been involved in so far, he seems to have been everywhere, and I don't know how successful he's actually been in as the dogs lead by 13 points. Six disposals going at 100%, Jack News. It's inside their 50. It's near the boundary now. Pick and kept it alive, giving Smith a moment of opportunity for the dogs. But Stephen stripped him of the ball. Kicks in a hurry. And uh, the Saints control possession. Stephen a hand pass to Geary, who's kicked smothered. And ricochets over the boundary line. And the Bulldog fans down at the Footscray end, very involved in this. I think they can sense there's uh, something brewing out uh, Western Oval Way, Tony. Yeah, statistically it might be the advantage with the Dogs, but they only lead by 13 points, two and a half minutes to quarter time. Ray White clock as Robert and tries to hold up yet again. Saints arrive in number. Montagna tries to thread one out close to the boundary lines. Saints have moved to defensive 50. Cordy's handball punched forward and losing ground. Talia there gives off to Wood. Rob Murphy just forward of the centre. Goes on the left boot trying to precisely get one. McRae and his opponent fell to the ground. Schneider arrived quickly. Front of the pack for the Saints. Handball to Fisher. Outside defensive 50. Wants to bring it inboard for the Saints. Does so successfully between halfback and wing. Medallion club side. Montagna's got it for the Saints. Dogs by 13 points, Tim. Two minutes to go to quarter time. Been good, Montagna. How many uh, possessions has he had? He's up to eight, uh, Tim. He kicks beyond the wing here, but Webb has it off a pack for the Bulldogs. He kicks to the wing and he finds Easton Wood. Dock side of the ground. He comes inside because he can see a couple lining up in the corridor. One of them's picking, and he receives the kick adjacent to the big centre circle. He shaped short, he went long towards full forward. Four Saints flew, and Hickey was the tallest of them. And with a couple of them protecting him, he took a mark. Kicks quickly sideways to Webster, putting him in some space. He goes up the half-back flank and finds Jack Stephen, as ever, getting a lot of the ball in the opening term here. Stephen wants a pass up the wing, finds Billing right on neutral territory, city side. 13-point lead to the Dogs at minute 13. Ray White countdown clock to quarter time. The kick, oh, it fell a bit short through the hands of Longer, who that is, that's Mum's trifle on Christmas Day, <laughs> spilling it on the floor <laughs> after the main meal. He should have grabbed that oh, one. Oh, yeah, he and Hickey haven't developed, oh, I would have thought, to the Saints' liking. You know, they've got to improve. They're getting a lot of game time, but uh, they've got to lift. Okay, Mr. Warehouse scoreboard, 21-8, to 8, low scoring. The Dogs by 13 points, but the Saints have got a chance. Off the pack, Armitage squares the ball inside 50. Yeah, put it in a good spot. Longer couldn't mark it, fall of the ball. Schneider can run in and surely kick a goal. He delayed it. He set himself up well. Sold a bit of candy. Got himself straight in front rather than going from the angle and with the right boot popped it through. So the Saints can be well pleased. They're within seven points in the last minute of the quarter. Even though the Bulldogs have looked a far more dangerous team, it's 3-3-2-2 to two, two for Chemist Warehouse. You caught it beautifully in the call there, Tim. They got it to a good spot, a really dangerous spot. That's what the Bulldogs have been doing, not been able to capitalise. But that ball, 20 metres out from goal, no matter wh- whether you got a pack of players there or no one there, somebody made a contest, brought the ball down. You're always a chance if you got the ball directly out in front of goal. Schneider was able to run in, kick an easy goal on them, but it's the first time they've been able to do that. The rest of the quarter they've been going around the edges. It just makes it so much hard work to go around the edges of a big field and then try and kick a goal from out wide. Chemist Warehouse scoreboard, the Dogs 21, Saints 14, 45 seconds left. Who can break? 
Well, Dunstan's given the ball off. Nunes involved again with Armitage to Dempster out wide on the wing. Saints have got a late chance now. 34 seconds left. Jack Stephen round the body. Lead up man. Schneider's got the ball. And the dog's defence at the moment's a little stretched as Schneider kicks it right to the teeth of goal. He went revolt. Longer arrives to help him out. Was never going to take the mark. And the ball's thumped out to the boundary by the Bulldog defence for a throw in just inside 50. We're down to 19 seconds. So uh, a play or two left in this quarter, St Kilda deep in attack, and if they could just manage to conjure a goal here they're virtually on level terms, Hickey the tap, got too much of it, it's near the boundary, Dunstan for a moment kept it alive, but now takes it over so it'll be thrown in again, about 25 around, left forward pocket, 11 seconds to go So 7 point margin, the dogs way Saints would need to be clean from the stoppage but they've got a chance, 40 metres out ball's thrown in who can come up with it? Revolt bounces over his head. Armitage has got it. Oh, he squared it up just a bit beyond Webster. Missed his man. Dixon clears the area. Good contest. Tough going. Both teams putting everything into it. 3 3 21. The Dogs and Kilda 2 2 14. As that quarter was brought to you by the Chemist Warehouse. Sam McClough. We'll go down to the dock first if we could, please. And we want to find out about Shane Savage. That's for the Sage Institute of Fitness, Doc. Yeah, you can start your stopwatch as of now. 20-minute concussion assessment. It will start on Shane Savage. So they waited to see how he was going. They weren't completely happy. So they're actually going to activate the sub. So you'll see that uh, Jack Sinclair will start this next quarter, boys. But uh, Savage will be assessed and then decide if he can return. The Dogs by seven points. 3-3-21. St Kilda 2-2-14. North narrowly over Richmond down in Hobart. Right across Australia. With thanks to your local Toyota dealer, this is 3RW football. Uh, welcome back, Nick Revolt. Lovely goal in the first quarter. The Dogs 3-3-21 at quarter time. St Kilda 2-2-14. With thanks to your local Toyota dealer, Match Day sponsor, David and the rest of the team at Patterson Cheney Toyota. The huge Mother's Day sale this weekend. Today, tomorrow at Patterson Cheney Toyota. And Hobart, it is North Melbourne by one point as they close in on half time. Sam McClure has all the numbers for Blamey Saunders here. And when you go through those numbers, Tone, we turn to Brownie and Lloydie, the Dogs have been dominant in those turnovers. You look at their uh, score sources, Origin, they've had 17 possession gains in their front half, the stat that we talked about before the game, but they've only kicked, uh, you know, two goals, two from that. So they're not generating a lot of score impact from their turn turnovers that they're getting. So somehow the Saints are managing to hold on and the inside 50s 20 to 9 in that quarter. The Saints uh, managed to score from a third of their, of their inside 50s. Yeah, time in the forward half, 73% in favour of the Dogs. If that continues, the Dogs are going to win this game comfortably. They got it into some really dangerous positions, and if it wasn't for Tom Boyd missing two easy goals, the, the scoreline could be very different. But time and time again, the Bulldogs got it at 20 metres out from goal, did it well. The other thing that impressed me about the Bulldogs, not only are they putting enormous pressure on, but they've worked so hard on their close hands in tight. You watch when they turn the ball over, their first three or four hands balls are so sharp which allows them the space then to move the ball but the Saints just got themselves back in the game with those two late goals. Yeah I think the dogs have blazed away too often they've just bombed the ball inside forward 50 they've got to lower their eyes Saints are dropping numbers back probably have got a defensive mindset here today the Saints trying to beat the dogs on the counter punch. So we start the second quarter the dogs by seven points all for RACV business insurance here's Tim Lane. Longer got the tap down to Armitage, but the Bulldogs managed to whisk it away towards half forward. Stringer paddled it away from goal, then couldn't collect it because uh, his opponents were alert to what he was up to and they force a ball up, about 55 out. Dogs in the second quarter to the Coventry end. St Kilda to the Footscray end. From the ball up, Nunes to Armitage. Armitage having a lot of it. Gives to Dempster, who feeds to Geary. Old hands at the wheel for St Kilda. Geary towards the oldest hand of all. Revolt. The hand, though, couldn't quite hang on to it because the pass was a bit high. And away come the Dogs and work it forward to Dixon. He was falling as he was pushed. Shot off the hand pass to Goods. Swinging kick to full forward. Cramery tried to shepherd it. It sat up on its end. Sam Fish has got it. He's gone. He delayed the hand pass just a moment. And just long enough for the hand of Dahlhouse to arrive and wrap him up. Fisher couldn't get a legal disposal away. And Lukey Dahlhouse is going to line them up with the man on the mark five metres out. Just the one handball, Tim, for Blamey Saunders here in the first quarter, Dalhouse. But yet again, pressure, pressure, pressure. And the damn wall will break eventually. 
Dalhouse comes in, 45 degree angle, he squeezed it through. It very nearly touched the right hand post, but it's a goal. Bulldogs 4 3 27, killed a 2 2 14. That is on the RACV business insurance scoreboard. Well, that's what you were talking about only 20 seconds ago about lowering their eyes. Yeah. The ball came through the wing, they lowered their eyes, able to get a quick handball from I think it was Dixon who maybe took the ball out there, and then their long kick into the goal square to a really dangerous position. But just that short kick broke the game up, which got them over the extra line. That's right. If they're smarter with it, Brownie, 20 inside 50s to 9 in that first quarter. I've admired the Saints' effort, but. In terms of, if they probably, Richardson probably thought, if we just play open an open game, they will smash us. So we've got to try something different. They're not going to score too many goals over the Saints playing this way. Expert analysis from Nathan Brown and Matthew Lloyd on Saturday afternoon football, 3RW 5AA, 6PR, right across Australia as the Dogs hold a 13-point lead. Two minutes into the second quarter on the Ray White clock. It's 4-3-27 to 2-2-14. Middle of the ground, hasn't been cleared. Armitage working overtime, another kick, but it goes a little sideways, giving Dalhouse a chance. Handball shot out, red by Stephen. There's a free kick coming back to the Dogs, as it was Honeychurch pushed in the back. Gives it to Dalhouse, middle of the ground. Wanted to go up the middle, gives it back to Honeychurch, who's got time to set it up. Oh, great block that time by Fisher. Series of handballs ends up with Fisher. Got it from Geary, under pressure though. He hurried getting rid of it. It's going to be a big turnover. And Wood, city side wings, got it for the dogs. No pressure, runs forward, 60 out, bombs it. Stringer's getting into position to leap. Couldn't quite uh, get a clear path though. And the Saints come away with the ball. Montagna spears a pass. And the Saints work it to Geary, who gets uh, himself into bother. And his hand pass has again turned the ball over. Picked up by McRae, quick kick with Montagna. Mops up his own error in a sense, takes the mark and switches play across ground into the safe hands of Sam Fisher. Who's in defensive 50, it's 27 to 14, 13 point margin to the Dogs. Halfback Armitage, how many for Blamey Saunders? His as he gives it perfectly to Schneider. Up to 16 disposals already. He gives it to Weller, back to Schneider, Saints building now. Lovely kick, Revolt in magnificent position. Great kick, all set up by David Armitage. He wants to unselfishly share it. Oh. And Easton Wood came in, knocked it away from Billings when he was going to mark 20 in front. And Wood, the kick to the wing. Dixon's got the ball. Now the Dogs should have the numbers as they go forward. Go slow play that time. McRae, round the body he goes. Kick, trying to get onto it that time then. Free kick, another one to the Dogs. Forward to the wing and Brett Goods has got it for the Dogs. 4-3-27 at 2-2-14. RACB Business Insurance scoreboard foregone second quarter. Goods uncertain. He sells some candy to Geary. And then he centres for Cramery. Nicely done by Brett Goods. Cramery about 47 out. Straight in front. And he's going back like a man with no intention other than to have a shot for goal. That long pass of Rebots is hang time. And of course, when it's a longer ball... The ball loses velocity, kicked it too during high. the course of its flight. It just hung and hung and hung and Easton would arrive. Cramery comes in from outside 50 when he kicks. It's a thumping really? kick, but it's a very wide one, and it doesn't even get close to the behind post. Out on the full by 8 or 10 metres, a free kick to the Saints. The Bulldogs lead by 13 points. Hey, can we go around the grounds for the AFL Premiership Club halftime, Sam McClure? And it's a one-goal lead to North Melbourne, 6 8 The Tigers 5 8 So to the city side back pocket, taken by Fisher of the Saints. To the wing, the ball goes. Hickey crashes the pack, but Tory Dixon having a really nice game. Handball to Kobe Stevens of the dog. Wants someone in the middle and gets one. Johannesson gets it. Handball to a stationary Cramery. Has to bring it round his body. Oh! Good guy's goal of the day. Stuart Cramery, set shot, put it out on the full, turned instinctively in gold. 5 3 33, the dogs are Saints 2 2 14. 13 RACV scoreboard for all your business insurance needs. Taking the uh, unbelievable goal from Cramery out of it, but where the Bulldogs have really improved so far this year has been off their back end through the likes of Stevens, who was involved in that, Johannesson, who's got genuine pace, and Easton Wood, who Stopped a certain goal before. Three tall, rebounding players who can run and use the football have just been invaluable off the half-back line this year, and they set up that goal to Kramer, who finished it nicely. That was an amazing finish. Like a man who, having missed by about 20 metres with his previous shot, 
only a minute earlier, I thought, enough of this, and just went thump. Oh, here's Armitage breaking away from a good win in the ruck. He kicks into a leading Bruce, who takes a mark 30 out straight in front for St Kilda. The three handballs for Blamey Saunders here is in the first quarter. Josh Bruce hasn't had any balls really come in uh, with no pressure like that. He pushed off Fletcher Roberts, who's his matchup today. And for so many poor kicks in the game for set shots, he's looked really comfortable with his set shots in the first five rounds. Outright second on the goal kicking table going into the round. Bruce with 17 comes oh, in no. and he's still on 17 it. as he hooked that awfully. He a minor score. 24 goals, 6 in his yeah. career before that kick. And Matthew, as soon as it left the boot, you know. I know, I think he got too close to the mound, the mark, and uh, pulled that one across his body. Murphy straight up the middle again from the kick in for the dogs to a pack. In the middle of the ground, Dalhouse got it. Kobe Stevens broke one, broke two, broke three and threw it away. Should be a St Kilda free kick. Umpire allows play to continue. Saints are around the ball at the moment. They've got a forward of the centre pick and the handball. More in hope than anything else. Tried to fire the ball out. I reckon there'll be a bounce now. Forward of the centre, St Kilda into attack going to... The Footscray on Melbourne Roman Centre into the ground. 5-3-33 to 2-3-15. 13-RACV scoreboard. Picked up neatly by Sinclair. He kicks it long, back of the pack, and it bounces for Revolt. Now bounced away from goal. Tried to give it the Billings. Oh, Robert Murphy read it from the hands. Keeps it alive against the boundary line and spears a pass. Got to say, Nathan, that's three oh, wonderful it's action. It's, I reckon oh, it's Clay Smith, and again, it's on oh, the no. edge grass to uh, synthetic. Is he OK? No, he's got up, Tim. He went to ground. Now, just he's not going off. I, th I think that was on the grass more yeah. than anything else. Yeah. Uh, Doctor, uh, uh, Doc, uh, please, for the Sage Institute of Fitness, what did you see? Uh, well, what I saw was he significantly jarred his left knee on the synthetic tone. Um, so he's just limping through right. the interchange now, Clay Smith. Um, the docs will have a chat with him, so I'll just confirm with you. But uh, I thought it was more on the synthetic. Uh, I don't think it was, Doc. Dogs okay. clear the ball to the wing. Cramery under pressure. A hand pass to Johannesson to Picken. Now out in front of Stevens. Running into trouble. Has to release to McRae with Bruce bearing down. Well played, Bruce. Ball comes loose to Loney, but he's kicked poor. Talia dropped the sitter, and this will let the Saints in. But Schneider fumbled. The pressure of the game telling. Johannesson works it clear. Gives to Picken. Well done by the Dogs. Kick to Goods. Hand pass to McRae. Through the centre he goes. Has a couple of bounces. Works his way wide. City side. Now places the kick in the Boyd direction. Too strong for him. Saints there with numbers. But Goods arrives. Gets his hands onto it. Gave a hand pass to Honeychurch. To the Bont. Who swings it. Goal with it in the square. Stringer takes the mark. Right in front. Five metres out. And will surely kick another Bulldog goal. They're lucky to have this ball in their hands because Tom Boyd, Lloyd, he, uh, he led three times, but McRae's a left footer. He needed him to go to the other yeah. side. He wanted to come up the middle every time as he comes and kicks a goal. String and three second, 6 3 39 to 2 3 15 for RACB. He what? didn't reposition himself enough. He wanted to lead one way, so he, he actually led three times straight up the middle, but McRae's a left footer. He needed to double back and go wider, made it for a tough kick for McRae. Luckily, uh, String had jumped out the back. Got it from Bont and Pally in for an easy goal. There's no doubt he's still got a fair bit to learn, Tom Boyd, but I thought McRae could have got it in there earlier to him before all the numbers drop back. But Doc Larkins down on the boundary. What are you thinking with uh, Clay Smith? Uh, well, they're, they're worried about the stability of his right knee. They haven't confirmed that it's the ACL tear rupture again. They've taken him down the race to okay. get into a better position. Thanks, Doc, for the Sage Institute of Fitness. Become a personal trainer through Sage Institute of Fitness. 1300, double six four, double six four out of the middle. Kobe Stevens of the Dogs starting to pull away a bit now. The Dogs inside 50. Honeychurch battles hard again, brings Dunes to the ground. 40 out from the Dogs. Rovac to Dalhouse to Dixon, who kicks it out on the full from 25 metres. And normally, Nathan, his calling card is being very reliable, snapping goals. Uh, deadly so far this year and in his career, but so many times today that ball has been butchered either by hand or by foot from directly in front. So the kick comes in, back pocket to half-back, Delaney in front from the side, Johannesson, who's just playing a terrific game, Matthew, off half-back. It's confident, it's running, it's everything about Jason Johannesson. Guys that can break the lines in modern-day footy, uh, 
are worth their weight in gold, and he and Rob Murphy are so good at that. Dogs by 24 points. 13 RACV scoreboard, 11 gone second quarter. They have it at half forward. Crashing in goes Stevens. Couldn't get out of trouble. Picked up by Montagna. He couldn't get out of trouble either. Cremery had it. He was gang tackled. Now there's a high tackle I'd have thought on Stevens. Stephen. Yep. The umpire, though, I don't know whether it's going no, to they're cracking down on that one, Tim. Cracking down on that one where the player gets the ball and ducks his head in under looking for the free kick. The umpires have been instructed not to pay that. It's at the 50. Longer front position is pinged for shepherding. Cordy will take the free kick. Man on the mark. Just half a step outside the 50. Cordy sits it up. Good placement. Boyd arriving late. Ball fisted away, though, by the Saint defence. Dunstan fumbled for a moment. You can't afford to do that against the Dogs, who win the ball back. Cramery hooks it to the goal square, but camped under it is Montagna. Pete, if we can go down for the Sage Institute of Fitness, an update from both St Kilda's perspective and also the Dogs. What are we looking at? Oh, well, Shane Savage was never looking good, and he's been subbed out of the game. Uh, so that uh, is his Sinclair concussion sub. Yeah, Sinclair's been out there for the last... Um, 10 minutes as you know uh-huh. and they're still having a look at Clay Smith's right knee downstairs to, to really confirm when he landed so awkwardly whether he's done any damage he did walk comfortably down but they're just about to come back oh I've got to is, does that, is walking back so comfortably is the Saints knock it round in the back pocket he, should, is that a cause for optimism or is still the body's nice and warm and the, no what's a cause for optimism is he's running laps up and down the side of the uh, boundary line right now that's the real optimism uh, for the Bulldogs good stuff thanks very much for the update Peters the Saints bring it to half back Armitage having a blinder wins it at half back goes to Billings got it on broadcast wing to Stephen with the little legs pumping a searing pass just too low for Bruce couldn't quite hang on to the mark there is a trip at a Bulldog free kick although they play on Johannesson bursting to the middle fed to Stevens. Johannesson kept coming to receive gives to Dalhouse just can't see anything forward of him so he waits and then he passes tentatively Stevens has got it just inside the boundary. Dalhouse has to help him out. In fact, it was Dixon to Dalhouse to Stevens who swings at the full forward. But in the way, McKenzie takes the mark for St Kilda. Dogs by 24 points. Ten minutes to go to half time. Ray White countdown clock. Nunes under pressure in the defence. It's all the dogs at the moment. Saints are just doing their best to hang on. Pinned in the back pocket. Montagna has to find a man unable to. Eastern Wood. 52 out, Mark squares the ball long to the top of the square, Stringer! Who was it, Trump? Stringer. <laughs> oh, he's a great call, Tone. He's a star. You must be excited. All Bulldogs fans, we've got players who just know where the goals are. Cranberry does and Stringer does. And he's now becoming a consistent match winner, this guy. Uh, he, just launched over the top of Dempster there. He didn't look to be in the contest. Uh, and he's got it lines up from 20 out directly in front for goal number three. A little cheer there for Smith as he runs back on the field. Good stuff. He's had more than his fair share of bad luck, including a bad of Sam and Allah, the poor boy, that really knocked him around for some time. Stringer for his third. Well, no, yep, just. just. 7-3-45, the Dogs. 2 3 15, the Saints. Call 13 RACV for all of your business insurance need. Bring you the second quarter. Sam, can we first check, before we go to Nathan Brown, check that half-time score again from Hobart for the AFL Premiership Club. North Melbourne, 6 8 44, lead Richmond, 5 8 38. As we turn to Nathan Brown, inside 50s, 30 to 13. Starting yeah, to unbelievable up. stat. What he is is a self-starter, Jake Stringer, and he gets his other teammates around him going, gets the crowd going. You watch him so far this year. Every first half, he's been really good. He doesn't do it in the second half. He starts his team. He gets them going. He's kicked three again early today. He kicked five before you blinked a couple of weeks ago. Now, there's going to be a free kick here for... Against Ace Cordy. Yes, down at the Bulldogs' front end of the ground. They've given away a free, so the free kick has taken the middle. Dunstan goes wide to McKenzie in a contest. Did well and breaks away confidently. Ran a long way, had a bounce eventually, and swings it long in the revolt direction. Revolt might have been interfered with. No free kick. Picked up by Pickham, who kicks clear. Dangerous kick. Could be coming back. McKenzie kept coming. He was tackled, taken over the line. And there will be a throw in, but she well played by young McKenzie. Yeah, I was going to say, second game, Matthew. He looks like he belongs. Uh, After two games, Daniel McKenzie. Yeah, line break out, left footer. But uh, they've been going too wide, too defensive. I haven't liked this game style from Alan Richardson today. Eight minutes to go to halftime. Ray White countdown clock. The Dogs by 30 points. Sinclair arrives. The Saints have it at half forward, 50 metres out. 
Oh, was that a little high on Armitage? Brought to the ground by McRae. Just a big possession winners for Blamey Saunders here. How many for Armitage? How many for McRae? Yeah, you know, Armitage who had 35 and 11 clearances last week, already up to 19 before half time. McRae has had nine. So pick out of the stoppage. St Kilda winner Dunstan goes toward full forward. Natalia, Ian Roughhead, with some old wise hands around him, developing as key defenders. Goes to halfback, one of those old wise heads is Eastern Wood, who marked the defensive 50 for the Dogs. He has two men lining up for this. One of them is Goods, takes the mark, sold the candy beautifully as he fooled them going onto his natural side, his left, and he kicks to Cramery. Another Molly Duca who dabs it onto McRae. Another one, outside 50, dabbing ball into the Boyd's lead in the Ford pocket. Kick too short for him, couldn't pick it up on the half volley, and it's out to the boundary for a throw-in just inside the 50. Lloyd here, the Saints going wide because they're intimidated to a degree and they feel as though they'll be chewed up and oh, spat out at the corridor. I feel they've got nothing to kick to. That one there, there was no excuse for going wide because they got a free kick at a centre bounce. So they should have just launched it forward, but too many players in the defensive half, so they have to chip it backwards and sideways. The long uh, the tap down, a little clearance to the wing. Picked up by Webb of the Dogs. Goes out wide of Roberts, just dabs one. Picken, busy again. High kick inside 50. Bonham Pally trying to get to the contest. All he can do is neutralise it, knock it out of bounds, Nate. The Dogs get the ball thrown in 35 around from their goal, and it's the Bulldogs 45, the Saints 15. Sam, for Blamey Saunders, what's the percentage time in the forward half for the Dogs? For the quarter, Brownie, or for the game? Yeah, for the quarter. <laughs> 65% forward half for the Dogs. 18 minutes in, it's coming back into their 50. It's swung long by Wood to the top of the goal square. No one can mark. Saints defence under pressure again as the Dogs tear in. Picked up though by Nunes. Hand pass to Armitage. Careful little kick with the non-preferred. And he put it right onto the chest of Liam Pickham. 40 out, 45 degree angle. That was just pursuit pressure. He was on no pressure. He was just on his opposite side. He had a fair bit amount of time to get that. And it was just pursuit pressure. He thought somebody was coming to get him. There wasn't. And that is just what the Bulldogs are doing at the moment. Pressure, pressure, pressure. Turn the ball over and then you score. They are. The, the word relentless has been used more than once, I fancy. And it is a whirlwind. They lead by five goals, pick it within range, but it's a tough shot. He kicks from 45, he kicks well. Brown was up before the ball was home. They were in no doubt. And the Bulldogs have a six-goal lead. RACV scoreboard, call 13 RACV for your business insurance needs. 8-3-51 to 2 3 15. And in this quarter, it is five goals straight to one behind. And arguably his best game of his career last week in Sydney, uh, Liam Pickin, and he led the disposals in the first quarter with eight, and now he's got a goal to go with it. But, uh, Sammy, the inside 50 stats is what's jumping out at you. Inside 50 is 13 to five, but goals from turnovers, all five of the Western Bulldogs' second yeah. quarter goals have come directly from turnovers from St Kilda. Speaking about Pickin, uh, he has been a target. This is the best patch of play I've seen him do, and he's actually hurting size. He looks like he has actually got some talent. Yes. He also looks like he'd have to produce his ID if he wanted to get half a dozen stubbies at night. He looks as if he's about 12. <laughs> and just look at it, it's, it's baby face stuff. <laughs> Those goals from turnovers too, I think it's as much about Richardson's game style as the pressure. I think because uh, there's no system out there. Armitage is almost playing him on his own at the moment. Handball to Weller. Got it high free. Kick the Saints in the middle of the ground. And I reckon Nathan Rove had almost suckered him in to give him the handball. Stopped waiter, gives it to Jack Stephen to the forward pocket. He goes, Revolt able to fly on his own. She was the ball knocked out after he took the mark. It's a clean mark to Revolt. Tough shot though, Nathan, from that pocket, forward pocket right at the Melbourne Remand Centre end. Will be a tough shot from there. He'll look around for a pass, but I'd imagine he'll go back. He's been kicking the ball very, very well. But uh, for him, he gets a little bit of right to left on his kick, so he's going to have to bring it back the other way. 36 points to deficit for the Saints. It's 8-3 to 2-3. 13 RACV scoreboard before the revolt kick. We're 21 minutes, Ray White clock, second quarter. Tries to nurse it going across the face. Ball doesn't go out of play. Will it go out now? She big tackled that time as a Dodge player tried to break away. Yeah, the tackler was Billings. Rovat was grabbed. Forward pocket left. Saints are into it. Uh, Dogs are trying to defend here, and they will. A bit easily as oh. McRae kicks it out on the full 
So Tim, it's coming back in a matter of moments. The Saints get the free, just four to the wing on the Medallion Club side. Awful kick from McRae, just hooked it off the instep. That's his big area, Tim, to go to an elite level. He's an accumulator, but he's going at 25% by foot today. Robert took a free kick short to Stephen, who went long towards full foot, but Eastern Wood backed himself to take the mark, took it well. And clears to Cramery out at the 50. Murphy streaming by, receives, kicks magnificently, long and straight to Stringer, who's got nothing forward of him. Just waits for Dixon to arrive, and then he loops it over the oh. top. Oh, three of them crash. Stephen went down for the dogs. Yunes and Geary in that as well. Oh, that was a three-man collision as they all went for the mark. The ball finishes up under a pack. And happily, everyone looks to be okay. There'll be a ball oh, up. It's as hard as you get. Three of them going. Uh, they were going full pace at that too. Unbelievable effort. 40, 40 out from the dog's goal. Robert and defensively tries to knock it away. Saints are under awful pressure at the moment. Geary receives from Montagna. He gets the ball to Loney. I reckon it's coming back in a matter of moments. If Ruffhead can pick it up or give it out the web. Got it high. Hickey. What's that expression? Agricultural when you know it's particularly uncoordinated it's a kindest way to say on the Toyota logo <laughs> on the medallion club side is Jack I would say Tim it was like a tarantula lope and Roughhead kicks it inside 50 long arms like testicles Tim. the it. ball's kicked into the 50 there's a some and, killer free kick and for everything that Jack Dyer has purported to say I'm tipping about two percent of it was true but Let's not spoil the great work done by the great uh, Brian Hanson. He'd often been on the spaghetti marijuana, I That's reckon, as the Saints work right. the ball across ground. And Delaney takes a mark, chips a short ball <laughs> back inside to Armitage, who dabs it short down the corridor to Longer, still at half back. So, Armitage's kick, that don't like it. It was rubbish. Free kick to Dalhouse. Stringer standing alongside him from the back. Murphy allowed to run and kick it long to the forward pocket. And it's a oh, is that Kobe Stevens? It is. What a good mark. Deep forward pocket right. And the result of which is he is out of the field of play at the platform 28 or Coventry end. It's 36 points the margin in favour of the dogs. 13 RACV scoreboard, but the way things are running for the dogs now, he just probably bananas this through and does it easily. Or kick it out on the full, one of the two. And it turned out to be the latter. <laughs> <laughs> 8 3 51 to sit 2 3 15 dogs by 36 points 3 16 ray white countdown clock to go it's tight third quarter just started in hobart north melbourne 44 richmond 38 saints work it weller short and sinclair takes a mark clear of defensive 50 but the saints really starting to labor under the pressure that the bulldogs have applied since the first bounce they're forced backwards here to robert who goes short down the corridor to Nunes but uncertainty is written all over them right now they just do not believe they can get the ball out with any certainty Nunes kicks long up the middle and it's going to come back because Eastern Wood who's playing a beauty has taken the mark just forward of the middle do you reckon if Jack was still around Tony he'd want the reintroduction of State of Oregon football <laughs> exactly as uh, Wood runs around Rebolt then kicks long to full forward. Cordy up. There might be a free. There is a Bulldog free kick. Is it Stringer or Boyd? Well, there's a Saint that went far too early. Kobe Stevens, I reckon. Yeah, he was the one who got interfeed with the right. Yeah, he got corked there. But uh, Sean Dempster it was who just uh, launched. It. Shouldn't have gone for it. Oh, she had to wait. Spoil. He deserves this. What a five minutes he's had. Kobe Stevens, the courage to go back with the flight of the ball. <laughs> then that mark in the air and then again standing under a ball uh, he deserves this goal and he's very very sore a T nasty cork you yeah. know boy oh, good T point Lloydy yeah. TAC replay what kind of driver are you raising he just had to wait as four converge result free kick Tim directly in front for the dogs for a sixth goal of the quarter unanswered other than by one behind in the Saints tally as Stevens comes in and goals well deserved he's paid the price and in fact I think he's going to hobble to the interchange gate and have a well earned breather and uh, a bit of treatment on that corky 9-3-57 to 2-3-15 and these Bulldogs Nathan Brown are no 8 day wonder this is no accident they're playing with supreme confidence Tim every time there's a stoppage or a scrimmage or the ball is 50-50 because of the defensive way that St Kilda are playing 
the Bulldogs players on the outer ring have got supreme confidence that they're going to win it. So they're gone even before the Bulldogs players win it. They're winning it more often at the coalface than what St Kilda are. And when they look up, they've got players like Dixon and Stevens and Rovat and Dalhouse are starting to come into it 30 or 40 metres ahead of the play. It's, it's a dangerous game style to play, but when you're winning the football, it pays dividends. Seven goal margin in favour of the Dogs. Long it gets the tap. Rovat just knocks it into the path of Dalhouse that they'll play the advantage. Johannesson on the end of a handball, wants to handball it over the top, gets a run at a Cramery pursued by Montagna, runs to 45, tries to shape it back, and one behind result stayed right. 9-4-58, the Dogs 2-3-15, the Saints on the 13 RACV scoreboard. Tim on its minute 10 to half time. And a long ball back into play by Robert, and is not marked by Fisher off his hand, it's over the line throw in it's about 65 around on the dogs right half forward flank they have monstered some killer in the second quarter and that dangerous style nathan brown was talking about will be tested to the max next week because they play Fremantle here on sunday what a game that will be as uh, the saints have got the ball here off half back armitage kicks up the wing webb up in front couldn't mark he recovered well though and won the ball at the back fed to wood Further away from goal as they just try and get themselves set up here. Fletcher Roberts stumbled for a moment, then gave to Roughhead, who pumps on a hand pass to the running machine, Johannesson. Stabbing ball up the flank, delicious pass. Finding Pickham 60 metres out, just inside the boundary on the right flank. 30 seconds to go, Ray White countdown clock. Will the Dogs get a direct shot at goal? Oh, Placemis should have marked that, Armitage. Tyless and brilliant handball Sinclair to Armitage broke a tackle gives to Webster all he can do is kick and it should be Easton Wood who is having a magnificent game at halfback for the Dogs Dogs will hang on to it they've got a seven goal margin gives it to Talia that'll be half time as Bond and Pally can oh, they get a late Smith's one Smith's done his knee Play Smith just buckled under him there trying to change direction to go yeah. for that mark oh this is awful right at the last boys you picked it up i was following in flight what's happened he went to uh, make a lead and as he changed direction his knee just buckled from underneath him his right yep. knee cool doc larkins now this is going to be controversial isn't it because this looks like a, a serious injury he came back after uh, jarring his knee as you said earlier yeah, just a reminder, 2013 he had an ACL reconstruction, 2014 he had an ACL reconstruction on the same knee. Now I haven't seen the incident like you guys obviously have, but he's on the ground at the moment, the medical staff are around him and uh, as Lloyd is describing it, or Tim I can't recall, it was just a non-contact, he wasn't in the contest, I was watching the ball as well guys, but he's clutching the right knee again off the back of the fact that he was off the ground earlier this quarter, Tim having the right knee assessed, having landed awkwardly, so... You put all that together, it, it sort of augur well for the fact that he's had a re-injury to the, the, the graft reconstruction. So um, I suspect um, we won't be seeing him today for the rest of the day. And, and, I, and I really think there's a high chance that will be a graft tear. Just so take, the us earlier. Through, yeah, take us through what you make of, of what happened earlier, Doc, and, and what would have happened. Well, what, what I've seen, he lands a stride. So he lands with his right knee earlier on the uh, grass and his left knee striding right onto the synthetic so he had a very wide stance and his knee his right knee buckled in towards the left knee now he was tested for stability so the graft and dr gary zimmerman very experienced uh, afl doctor he'd feel sick wouldn't he he would feel sick about now but the question is you know if he jarred the knee he may have had some loss of awareness of what the knee is doing or some swelling in the knee so even if he had a stable graft on his assessment 10 minutes ago you do lose a little bit of awareness or control of the knee if you've got swelling in the knee and that would be the fear that it swelled up when he's been back on the ground and this incident of changing direction which even it wasn't as dramatic as the one when he landed 10 minutes ago tim it's it's a simpler stress but it causes more damage the second time because of the initial initial concern well the right knee in the first incident doc we've just seen it again on the trc replay that's in the field of play that's nowhere near the synthetic but he just matthew eat and Nathan, yep. he seems to be just going back with the flight very, of the ball. Very innocuous. Just went back to change direction. Obviously, maybe caught his foot in the ground and buckled underneath him. Let's hope the best for him. Let's hope it is a, a jarred knee and not an ACL because he's already had one done. You see Dr. Jacob Landsberger on the back there and Dr. Gary Zimmerman, who would have assessed him down there. As you said, Tim, he would feel sick at the moment. He's, he's assessed the player. He's come back out, uh, picked the play, and he's done exactly the same thing, it would appear. 
So great to see Lee Montagna yeah. tone pat him on the chest as well. Yeah. He, he would realise that doesn't look good. Uh, he's been wiping tears away from the eyes. Uh, absolutely devastating. And it's still there was one last bit of play because Pickens got the shot at goal as the applause rings. But it's it's sad for Clay Smith yet again. Can Pickens kick the dogs tenth? Ball on its way. Oh, <laughs> look at this. Oh, no. it's and, uh, oh, it's on! Yeah. Now, yeah. now Stringer went to Revolt and gave him a whack. And oh boy! Uh, just a, a hard push with a forearm. Spot fires everywhere. Nunes picking. Everyone on the ground is involved in this. It's push, it's shove. It's far from dangerous. But at the moment, as Robertson tries to yank Tali away from the contest. Both teams at the Coventry end of the ground. They split now. 10-4-64 at half time. The Bulldogs and killed it 2-3-15. We will take our break now. North Melbourne lead by 10 points into the third quarter. But a stack to talk about in this first half. Awful news for Clay Smith. Dr Peter Larkins, I know you'll be finding out all about it, Pete. We'll get to you, we'll get to the numbers, but the Dogs' first half dominant, 49-point lead at halftime across Australia with thanks to your local Toyota dealer, Cameron David, and the rest of the team at Patterson Cheney Toyota. The huge Mother's Day sale this weekend at Patterson Cheney Toyota. This is 3RW Football. Get to be excited about Jake Stringer. Worrying signs, though, for a young Bulldog, Clay Smith whose knee looked like it's totally given out of him. This would be the third time if it is the worst. And that is a full knee reconstruction. The Dogs seven goals to one behind in that quarter. 10-4-64. St Kilda 2-3-15 as we start the halftime wrap for Sportsbet. And Sportsbet's cash out. Discover a new way to bet and cash out and go with Sportsbet. Always bet responsibly. Sportsbet.com.au We have a 49-point margin in favour of the Western Bulldogs. Sam, if you'd be so kind, we go around the grounds for the AFL Premiership Club, and I think we're late in the third quarter. Uh, yeah, midway through the third quarter, okay. Tone, and it's a 16-point lead to North Melbourne, 9 8 to the Tigers, 6 and an accurate Tigers, 46. Let's start that halftime wrap for Sportsbet with Matthew Lloyd and also Nathan Brown. <laughs> well, something that's gone completely under the radar, at least to me statistically, is that David Armitage has had 27 disposals in a half. I'll have to go through the record books to find out the most disposals in a half of footy. It's a good effort to get that much footy, but he has butchered it, yeah, like, it like a lot it, of his teammates. And at one stage, Lloyd, he said, um, that's awful, and I said it's disgraceful. The amount of St Kilda players who at the moment want to be able to win the football and have no absolute no care where they're going with the football after that, that they think, OK, my job's done now. I've got the ball. I'm going to get it out of my area, which doesn't help anybody in their team. The amount of times off half-back they'll get the football and they'll bomb it long. It's 38% by foot armitage is going at. He's had 21 in um, the defence 50. Per that's in, in, defensive the, in defensive 50. 50. So 38% half. of the times he is kicking the ball straight back to the opposition and all the St Kilda players are doing it. They're, they're under perceived pressure but they just want to pass the buck over to a teammate and go, oh, i got the ball, I'm under pressure, I don't want it in my area, I'm going to blast it as long as I can, and it comes straight back in. Halftime wrap with Matthew Lloyd and Nathan Brown. Guys, the lead is 49 points to the Western Bulldogs, and as I turn to the turnovers, something we've spoken about all game throughout the first quarter, scores from turnovers, 8-1, 49 to 1-1-7, and the lead is 49 points. So uh, you as two former players and two former champions of the game, the Bulldogs have gone from being salad dwellers of the competition over the last two years to potentially being second on the ladder after this game, barring an absolute debacle from here on in. I ask you as both former players, how does it and how can it change so quickly? Is it just a new coach? Is it a new regime of thinking um, to drastically change, like Port Adelaide have, the way they play, the way they set up, and the, the way that they're beating teams? Structurally, things have changed. I know uh, Brendan McCartney used to like an extra number around the contest. Uh, which then they'd get the ball inside 50 and often there'd be a player like uh, Dustin Fletcher or uh, Harry Taylor who would sit off and it really hurt them and their ability to score. Uh, I think now that uh, they're, they're turning the footy over, which you touched on before the game in the front half. So it's an attitude thing. I think, number one, um, they're, they're a happy team, but you're obviously happy when you're winning and you're playing well. So the ability for them to buy in and want to pressure and tackle and do all those sort of things is just staggering and they're doing it in the front half they're not waiting to do it in the defensive 
50. You know, that's something that... I don't think their forward line's that good. Stringer's a good player, but Boyd yeah. is a long, long way off. Uh, you know, Cramery hasn't done a lot, but it's just the ability for everyone to chip in and apply pressure. It's just creating so many opportunities to score. Well, they still rank very low from goals from mm. Mark, so yeah. it's, mm. it's their running game that's winning it for them. Uh, personnel-wise, not much has changed. You'd have to say they're lesser on personnel-wise than last year with Higgins going... Cooney going and Griffin going, yes, they bring in Boyd and Liberatore's out, so they're, they're, they're down on that. But I would have thought uh, he played a negative game style, Brendan McCartney, which was um, he, he tried to bottle a game up. He tried to play a really defensive game style where I think Luke Beveridge has taken the reins off and said, OK, we're going to attack the game. We're going to play with a bit of freedom. We're going to... They were one-on-one a lot of the ground, and Luke Beveridge has played more of a, a zone defence when clubs get the ball inside the defensive 50 to try and get out. It's a very Phil Walsh, very Alistair Clarkson style game plan and and, and it's worked for them. And the other part of the thing, I think they buy into Luke Beveridge as a as a person, from what I've been told by a few people at the club, more than they did Brendan McCartney. And when you buy into somebody as a person, you live and breathe what they, they want and you try and emulate what they want you to do. And you're more likely, whether it's effort, whether it's um, whatever it is, they are buying into Luke Beveridge's game plan, Luke Beveridge is a person more than they did Brendan McCartney and they are happier because of it. Western Bulldogs by 49 points at halftime, 10-4-64 to St Kilda, 2-3-15. As we come towards the end of the halftime wrap, uh, question without notice for both of you. I'll start with you, Matthew Lloyd. Can the Western Bulldogs A, make the finals and B, do damage? Well, I think they can definitely make the finals. I think that, uh, as Brownie touched on this and he's right, they won't be able to do this for 22 rounds, I wouldn't have thought, because, you know, look at their team. And Can they do damage in the finals, saying, Lord? Uh, I think if they could win a final, it would be the maximum for mine. Brownie. Well, they're going to win here today, so they're going to be 5-1 and one against Fremantle. Uh, I don't think they can beat Fremantle 5-2, but then they've got two games they will win, Melbourne and also GWS. So they're 7-2 and two going into a bye. Mm. That is a big, big launching pad. You'd have to win 12 games. So in this current form, you'd probably win five games in the back half. So they are going to fall away at times. Can they win a final? I don't know whether they can win a final, but looking at their draw, they will play finals. Half time here for Sportsbet. Western Bulldogs 10 4 64, St Kilda 2 3 15. Throughout Australia, this is 3AW's Round 6 coverage of the 2015 Toyota AFL Premiership season. Prep start the second half. It is the Dogs by 49 points. For Advanced Hair Clinic, we start the third quarter at 64 to 15. The Dogs way. Here's Tim Lane. Stunning second term from the Bulldogs. St Kilda win the first clearance here, but Montagna's wayward bomb into the 50 is easily marked by Roughhead, who hand passes to Talia, and he kicks to his captain, Murphy, out at defensive 50. He takes off. He uh, realises he's got nowhere to go. Heads back to the boundary. Kicks up the wing, and he's well supported by Kobe Stevens, who took a bit of punishment during the second quarter. He stands his ground here and he takes a mark just behind the wing. And repeating the news that, uh, speaking of punishment, Clay Smith stretch it off at the half-time siren and it looks like another serious knee injury. Long ball, Stevens, well marked by big ace Cordy. 75 or 80 metres out, right half forward flank. He kicks into the 50s after Boyd, but Delaney chops it off for St Kilda in the back pocket. So Delaney of the Saints moves it quickly, she revolt closer to full back, takes it, handball to the dock side, Dempster has it, to a contest, it's two on two on the wing, Bruce pursued all the way to the boundary line at that time by Roberts, the result of which, Matthew, was the yeah. ball will be tossed in in the dogs attacking half between wing half forward. So the Saints full back got it at about 50, 30 metres out from goal and the Saints full forward got it about you know, 70 metres out from goal, so that sums up St Kilda today, they've been far too defensive unless he's playing on the ball Yeah. I, I can't understand why he'd be up in the defensive end. He did the ruck work that time, knocked it straight to Dixon. Ball on the wing as Webb handball missed. Sinclair under pressure for the Saints. Gets a right foot kick away. Stays in the field to play. Beats the advancing pack. Ruffett, good tackle that time by Hickey. Looks to be hitting the ground rather than the ball. And the ball goes out of bounds. For the Sage Institute of Fitness, Dr Peter Larkins. Yeah, we're just confirming the worst news on Clay Smith, uh, Tony. He has ruptured the ACL graft and uh, probably is. Uh, we won't be back this season for that. 
Uh, news we never like hearing from the ball up. St Kilda's footy for a moment, but Longer lost it. Bontempelli didn't. He gave to Cremery, who runs forward, pokes on a pass. He's got Rovat running forward. Nice accommodating oh. bounce and a lovely left foot delivery. And on the lead, Stringer has marked it just inside 50, out near the boundary. I think the comment was made, might have been Nathan Brown, mm. that he plays well early, not so well across the whole four quarters. Let's see what he can do here. Three first half goals right in his foot. <laughs> that is a magnificent kick. String of four. Western Bulldogs 11 4 70. St Kilda 2 3 15 on the advanced hair clinic scoreboard. What I like about him, Lloyd, he's got some spunk. He knows his ability, he knows he's good, and he doesn't mind letting people know that he's around, and he has that shot at goal. They haven't had that possibly since Barry Hall played up in the forward end. He's a, he's a fresher breath there. Uh, <laughs> a a breath of the fresh air up there. A fresher breath air. Yeah. <laughs> good Nathan Brown about yeah, it, isn't there? Yeah. Lordy, would you say? Yeah, uh, yeah. That's right. Don't forget the day uh, Brownie <laughs> let everyone know what he was thinking when he ran into an open goal and stuck the finger up. And <laughs> I think you lost that game too, didn't you, Brownie? <laughs> 32 <laughs> points up we were. Yeah, nice, nice find in the mail as well. Hey, three minutes gone. Third quarter advanced hair clinic scoreboard it's a 55 point margin to the dogs montagna wins it out dunstan's kick charged down by honeychurch went and got the ball drew the high contact and umpire said no it wasn't the correct disposal it was an illegal one so honeychurch penalized and in the middle of the ground dunstan to take the ball 11 4 70 to 2 3 15 the dogs well and truly on top north melbourne was getting away last time i'll get to them in a moment with you sam for the afl premiership club Dunstan just chips it up, front of the pack though, Cordy confidently, front of the pack takes the mark, gives off a little one, oh gee whiz, they're going to run themselves into trouble, Talia and Ruffett, magnificent chase that time by Bruce, should win a free kick, as it was just under pressure, and Bruce, hard forward pocket right at the Coventry or platform 28 end of the ground, and he is outside the field of play, so he'll go in an arc. Just a margin North Melbourne's way, please, Sam, before the kick. 39 points approaching three-quarter time. So Bruce comes in, takes two steps, tries to bring it round, just misses. And it's St Kilda at one behind. 2-4-16 their score. Five minutes gone, Ray White clock, third quarter. Western Bulldogs 11-4-70. Murphy to bring the ball back into play. Nine-goal lead, Murphy plays on. He's in strife. He might be gone. He is gone. So two consecutive holding the balls against the Bulldogs in defence. We see the rare sight of uh, Bob Murphy, I reckon, just contesting the decision with the umpire, feeling as though he might have got a hand pass to it. But Hickey will take a free kick. The man on the mark is scarcely more than 10 metres out, but there is a a 45-degree angle to contend with, and there's a TAC replay validating the umpire's decision. Hickey, a left footer, comes in. It is a prodding kick, but it's a straight prodding kick. And the Saints, after a very long hiatus, have their third goal, but trailed by eight goals. 11-4-70, the Dogs, 3-4-22, the Saints. For Advanced Hair Clinic, the world leaders in the hair restoration. Well, it's a good effort there from Hickey to tackle uh, Rob Murphy, but... I just think, Scoop, uh, I saw it last night with Grundy and Wits. I'm not sure you can play those two in the same team. It slows your team down. And Longer and Hickey, give us their stats for over a half a football because it hasn't been many. I don't think you can take these two into the same team. Hickey's only had the three disposals, all of them kicks, and Longer has had... He's only had one handball. So they've had four disposals yeah, between them, the yeah, two ruckmen. Yeah, that's, that's a real concern. Uh, I think they would have subbed one of them out had Savage not been con- concussed and had to be subbed out. I reckon that bounce will be recalled. Three more seconds lost time. 11 for 70 the Dogs. Saints 3 4 22. Six minutes gone. Third quarter for advanced hair cleaning. Uh, ball just tossed up this time. Longer gets the tap down. Still hasn't been moved away from the middle. Cordy in there hard. Somehow managed to extract the ball, but handball went to Revolt under pressure, then to Armitage. Webster tried to grab and kick in the one motion. To the wing, the ball goes. Schneider, nice pick up in front of Hunter. Spears a handball to Armitage, to Revolt. It's all by hand as they go along the city side wing. I thought just putting the ball on the deck that time, St Kilda should have been penalised. Armitage wins another one. Back to Longer. Now they've got clean possession, the Saints. Geary fires a pass into the forward pocket, going back bravely that time, Lucas. She got the hot handball that time then from Talia, 20 metres out. 
over the top of him this time, trying to subdue him, Jack Loney. A little quieter today. At least him, the Saints get the stoppage. 25 out directly in front of their goal. But they're a long way down. It's a 48-point margin to the Dogs. Seven minutes, third quarter. Rare to see them build consecutive attacks, and they might be able to make something of this because Armitage has got it. He snaps at goal, and that's a good guy's goal of the day. The Saints string a couple together, and the margin is seven goals. 11 for the Dogs, 4 for the Saints. We've had seven and a half minutes on the Ray White clock in this third term around the ground. Scoot McClure. And a couple of points to finish off the quarter from North Melbourne. It's now a 41-point lead, 13-10, 88-2, to Richmond, 6-11, 47. Lindsay Thomas with four goals. Similar scoreline for the Tigers, three weeks in a row around that six-goal mark, seven-goal mark. A uh, lot of trouble brewing, I think, at Tigerland and a lot of pressure on their coach. But uh, they were in, they copped the fair spray, the Saints at halftime. Alan Richardson, their structure's a little bit better there. Just open the game up, see who can play and compete in their own terms, in their own rights, one-on-one. Two goals to one, Saints way third quarter, eight minutes gone. Hunter wins it out of the middle, subbed on for Clay Smith, who believes done his ACL. The half forward, the ball goes that time. Delhouse can't get the ball. Just kick back to the middle of the ground as Geary receives from Schneider, gives to Billing, 65 mm. out. High kick inside 50 for the Saints. They've got a chance. Murphy knocks it away from Loney. Overrunning the ball that time and then was Loney. As pick and halfback wins it. Johannes has been terrific. Wants a runner and gets one. Murphy on the city wing. Handball to Hunter. He can turn onto his left or retreat. Decides to retreat. And McRae can try and set it up. At halfback, he goes into the corridor and the dogs control the football. Bad miss by Yacordi. It was a long way down, but he should have marked it. However, they maintain possession. And Roberts boots them forward to Dalhouse, who gives a little hand pass to Hunter. And he chips a kick towards the 50. And it's marked by uh, Rovat, who kicks to four. Oh. Oh, soaring leap by Stringer. Didn't take the mark. St Kilda's ball. Delaney, a little hand pass. Smothered by Cramery as the work rate of the uh, Bulldog front half doesn't diminish. It's knocked over the boundary line throw-in. 11-4 to 4-4, dogs by 42. giving him far too much space, yeah. Stringer. They're, they're, they're st- saying 30 metres off him to try and zone up. He's the sort of man you need to go one-on-one with. He's too smart in the forward end to find space. Cordy, the tap. Hunter won it. Handball quickly to Rovat. Missed it. Rovat goes again. 55 out from the dogs' goal. McKenzie somehow shovels to Loney. High kick to the wing. Should be a dog's mark. Talia arrives first. 70 to 28, 42 point the margin or seven goals in favour of the Bulldogs. Advanced Hair Clinic scoreboard to full four they go. Cordy at the back from the side, Boyd. Right at the back, string around the body, <laughs> over the shoulder. Misses left. No chance of handballing that one off, Matthew. <laughs> <laughs> Not that anyone, I don't think, was there, but it was a neat snap. 11-5-71 at missed. St Kilda 4-4-28. And, Tim, we've gone 10 minutes. Ray White clock, third quarter. Saints bring it back in long, and Weller takes a good mark. Had McRae under the ball, but umpire oh. Schmidt says that he's pushed him in the back. So it's a free kick to McRae. He's a long way out, 80 from goal. He kicks poorly to within about 30. Pontempelli front position. Couldn't mark. Schneider mopped up. Gave to uh, Revolt, to Billings. And they're away now. Nunes from behind the centre to a very open front half. In fact, only two people in it. One of them is Bruce. Now he's got a bit of company. He's tackled. He got off a hand pass to Hickey, who was immediately put under the pump. He got it off. And the Saints are a bit of a chance as Loney swings into the forward pocket. And it's well marked up there by Sinclair. A couple of metres in from the boundary. Right pocket. Difficult shot. And perhaps one for the banana bend back. He's got the uh, Bruce Andrew part in his hair. Done tone with what piece of equipment. As Loney kicks. And he could have done with one of those pieces of equipment. As he misses on the near side. It's a behind. Bit of brook cream work over the top. Oh, yes. And a theodolite. That's what uh, the great Bruce Andrews had. That is a straight part. I still don't know what it is, but it was some measuring instrument. Surveyors use it. Surve- exactly. To draw straight lines, and that is a straight line in the boys' part. Seven goal lead. <laughs> Dogs by 42 points. As Hunter, been busy since coming on as the sub. High kick. Almost fell into Rovat's hand. Front of the pack, Dixon. Knocked it nicely to Dalhouse. Through traffic goods. Threw it in the air. and killed a free kick. They've won the turnover, though. Montagna's handball too sharp for McKenzie. 
trying to come through Loney, been busy in this quarter, able to knock it to Jack Stephen, and they've done it well, as best they could, just to knock the ball up into the path of Billings. The left footer gets a bit of... Well, the goals open up a little bit. He's at half forward right at the southern end, Billings. But he's outside the field of play at the moment. The man on the mark, Brett Goods, 43 metres out from goal. 13 minutes gone. Can Billings reduce the margin for the Saints? Hit it sweetly. Hit it really sweetly. Great goal. Good guys, goal of the day. Buy in store or online. And, of course, courtesy of the good guys, goal of the year, $5,000 worth of LG Entertainment. And it will include a 65-inch smart TV. 5535 the Saints. Trailing the dogs, but much better third quarter from St Kilda. 11-5-71, and that is all on the advanced hair clinic scoreboard. Given their dues, Lloydie, uh, they have a crack, St Kilda. It's not through a lack of effort. It's, it's more through a lack of talent and structure at the moment that they're so far behind. Uh, Alan Richardson last week said, we didn't really care about the result to Essendon, but I was just Im impressed with the effort. This third quarter, the amount of times they've been able to turn the footy over, like the Bulldogs have all game, in their forward 50, they've been able to give themselves better opportunities. Six goal margin, three goals to one for uh, the quarter for the Saints. As Rovat, defensive side of the pack, cleans up here for the Dogs. Gives to Johannesson, who just stormed through the middle. But then he got himself into trouble and he went to ground. And he's been pinged for holding it. And the Saints starting to hold up. They work it to Dunstan, who goes wide with the left foot, too wide. It bounces away from Schneider and Loney to the line for a throw-in between wing and half four. For Blamey Saunders here, what's St Kilda doing right in the third quarter, please, Sam? Oh, they're just starting to use the ball better. They're going at, uh, well, they've had 14 effective kicks to eight this quarter, so using the ball a lot better than the Dogs. Armitage climbs in third man here. Ball in dispute at ground level. Well done by Cordy, but his hand pass stolen by Schneider, who gives to Montagna a swinger out of the forward pocket. Bruce said himself might have copped interference over the shoulder, not spotted, and the ball's knocked to the boundary throw in. Right forward pocket, Saints again in attack. He's got the Bruce cry already, Brown. Is yeah. he, has he earned that yet? Oh, he's getting there. He? 25 around, forward pocket Probably right. Not, <laughs> Saints into attack, third man up, Revolt tries to knock it down. Bond and Pally quieter these day off the side of the boot, but it fell neatly to Goods. Gives it out, Honeychurch, half back on the Medallion Club side. Back to pick, and he wants to thread a pass through traffic. Did it neatly. Dalhouse has got the ball. 36 yep. points the Dogs lead by Go Matthew. Tony, just uh, eight possessions uh, for Blamey Saunders. Here's the Bonton Pally, very quiet. Been quiet. A defensive kick right to defensive 50 half back. Johannesson has the ball. Round the grounds, please, Sam. North Melbourne, as we start the last quarter, well and truly in control. Yeah, they certainly are. They have a 41 point lead. 13 10, 88, 6 11, 47. Richmond, Alex Rance off with concussion. Bulldogs, four to the wing. City side, Eastern Wood. Lovely kick on the lead. Boyd couldn't take the mark. It bounces away to the boundary, and there'll be a throw in about 70 from goal. Right half forward flank for the Dogs, who have just eased back yeah. a little in their efforts here in this third quarter. They did uh, a lot of damage in the first half to lead by eight goals at halfway from the throw in. It's inside the 50 arm, and it's ridden forward, surely. Free kick, push in the back and killed his ball at half back. Nick Rewalt playing as a genuine midfielder in this quarter, up against Bontem Pally for much of this third quarter, and it's just as interesting to see how he plays midfield compared to forward. Armitage happy to concede ground, close to the fullback. Dempster's got it for the Saints to come out the medallion club side. Kick looks like it's going to fall short. Honeychurch not paid the mark, thought it might have been there on the second grab. Geary knocks it away. Sam, we are on David Armitage watch. It was 27 and a half time. We are 16 minutes into the third quarter. How many now? He's up to 32 and 11 contested possessions, six clearances, three inside 50s. Score check. The Dogs, 11-5-71. The Saints, 5-5-35. Dog, ball at half forward for the Dogs. Dogs ball. Bonton Pelly gets a kick here. It's just a, uh, a struggling effort into the 50. Dempster knocks it away from goal. Pursues. He's got numbers against him. Johannesson's got it. He was brought down. Helping him out as Dixon, hand pass to Goods, sidestep, then he came back the original way and he kicks long to full forward, Boyd couldn't mark, Kramer he crumbed him, couldn't get it onto his boot before he was wrapped up in a tackle, Saints emerge, Geary tackled on his kick, spilling ball collected by Armitage for another one, 
He kicks short and another one as he found Dunstan who gave it back to Armitage. He kicks to Schneider who has a man loose at half forward. Jack Stevens 70 out. And he can go to Bruce who's got off his man. High kick. Bruce should mark. He gets a free kick. He was cannon in the back that time. Umpire said no free. It's going to be a free to the Saints anyway. As out on the full the ball went. Anything in that uh, kick, boys, to Bruce? Uh, TAC replay. I'd love to see it again, Tone. But uh, he should have taken the mark anyway. Schneider takes the mark against the boundary line. The snap Billings misses. Left one behind. 5-6-36. Make that Jack Steven. 5-6-36. Dogs 11 5 71. Advanced Hair Clinic scoreboard. Luke Beveridge will be disappointed with this quarter, Lloyd. It's the first time I've seen him go away from a real structured game plan of hard in and under work and then put enormous pressure on. This first 20 minutes of this third quarter has been pretty ordinary. Yeah, they had a tough game in Sydney. Do you give them that excuse? Or is their game style hard to maintain for four quarters? Roberts' kick wasn't good. Saints mark, middle of the ground. Fisher kicks it back into the 50. Bruce is there. Support from Sinclair. Bruce came down with the ball, but didn't have the first pair of hands on it. So play goes on. Sinclair lays a strong tackle and forces the ball up as the Bulldogs aren't bringing it out as easily as they did in the first half. It's 40 out from goal. Right half forward flank, Saints in attack. So from the restart, the Dogs can get on to it. McRae tackled as he kicks out on the full. And then Goods and Weller go at it 10 metres off the plate. Inside 50s for Blamey Saunders. Here's this quarter, please, Sam. 10-9 uh, St Kilda's way, 49-26 Bulldogs way overall. OK, McKenzie goes short on felt, the wing. Yeah, felt Fitch like much got more, it. didn't it, Tony? Yeah, it did, yeah. 35 points to the margin, the Dogs lead, but the Saints are going forward again. Ball carries the pack, and it should be out of bounds this time. Or can the Saints keep it alive? No, free kick going to go the Dogs way, and McRae to win a free kick there. Between back pocket and half back, advanced hair clinic scoreboard. 19 minutes into the third quarter, the Dogs 71, the Saints 36 to half back. It's a good mark to, uh, taken by Fisher. Fisher can go in the middle of the ground, so the Saints have got a chance to break now through the corridor. If they can move quickly, they can't. Revolt's got to try and kick to a rather crowded forward line now. Just forward of the centre line and can't see anything to go to as the Dogs have flooded back. So Revolt goes across ground to Geary in the centre circle, further across to Roberton. A dabbing kick to Stephen, who's between wing and half forward. He lo- passes low and well to Dempster, who's got up out of defence to take a mark at the 50. Man on the mark, standing on the paint. Dempster looks as though he's going to seize the opportunity, a very rare one, to have a shot at goal. Scoot McClure will know how long it is since he's kicked one. He changes his mind. He suckered them into believing he was having a go, and then he passed. But Weller couldn't hang on to the mark. And the ball is under a pack. Saints almost extracted. Murphy covers them. But there will be a St Kilda free kick. There was some high contact. And Jack Loney is the player who is going to take possession of the ball. And he'll line them up with the man on the mark, 20 out. They first uh, half free kicks were 13 to the Bulldogs, 3 to the Saints. But Blamey Saunders is because they wanted it more, the Dogs. And they were in, they were Hard at it, whereas it's the opposite in this third quarter. The Saints have been brilliant. Six free kicks to two, being rewarded for their efforts. Around the grounds after this shot from Loney. Saints three goals to one for the quarter, and Loney makes it four goals to one. Bulldogs 11 5 71. St Kilda 6 6 42 on the advanced hair clinic. Scoreboard 27 minutes gone. Scoop around the grounds for the AFL Premiership Club. And back, dead back goals from the Tigers. So they stay in the hunt. They're 8, 12, 60, 28, po- 28 points behind North Melbourne, 13, 10, 88. And back to back goals for the Saints now give them at least a glimmer of hope. It's now under five goals. And Doc, you're noticing it on the boundary line, a, a change in this game? Oh, well, obviously, uh, you know, from an enthusiasm point of view, the Saints uh, players as they come through interchange and just talking to each other close up, uh, you know, they know they're uh, they're playing better footy this quarter and uh, that, that's obvious, yeah, Lloyd. The difference is the Saints are winning the ball forward to centre rather than having to win it in the Dogs 
forward 50 and then they get forced to turn it over. They're winning at centre and they're moving forward. So a chance for Armitage, who's been wonderful today. Gets a handball out. High kick McKenzie. Wants a runner, gets one Schneider. All of a sudden the dog's looking here, a little lifeless. The run with St Kilda. Webster receives it. Goes long that time, just too much on it for Weller. Ball knocked away. But the Saints have got it in their attacking half. So Lloydy, time and time again, and even uh, Tim said in the first quarter, Ace Cordy doing such a great job. It was seven clearances to zip. I think he got out to about 13 to 2. This whole quarter has been St Kilda winning the clearances, which allows them inside forward 50 more often. 29 points the margin. The dogs hang on to it at the moment. Stephen comes in at half forward, tackle. There's a pack of players there. 11 5 71 to St Kilda, 6 6 42. Advanced Hair Clinic scoreboard. North Melbourne doing more than enough at the moment. Lead by 28 points, final quarter. Another goal here will just get, make it rather interesting. Cramery read the revolt tap, gave to Bontem Pally. Lopes away and goes long to a contest. Half forward, Delaney and Boyd. Play on should be the call. Uh, the umpire said no. He hung on to Boyd for a fraction long. The crowd might have had a tiny bit of influence in that. Forward of the wing. Kicks to the pocket. Got a man waiting there for him. Kobe Stevens. Tight angle shot, Nathan. Has it 35 out for the dogs. Let's have a look at the TAC replay. He still looks like he's hampered by that injury. And obviously, they don't have anybody else who can come on the ground. So he's going to have to play out the game. It looks like a bad corky. He's limping every time he gets near the footy. They've put him forward to restrict how much he has to move. He's normally playing off the half-back line or the wing. But if he kicks this, he's kicked two goals under duress. Quarter that's meandered along. And the Saints have reduced the gap to 29 points. Tough angle shot, though, for Kobe Stevens. Ball on its way, going across the face, one behind, makes it an even five goals. 11 6 72 the Dogs, Saints 6 6 42. 4 50 to three quarter time, that's on the Ray White scoreboard. And the Saints look at, like Tim, they've got a tiny bit of urgency in their game all of a sudden. Yep, Robertson plays on and then goes the uh, short target to Webster between fullback and halfback. He's got himself into trouble. He has Delaney there to help him out. Delaney sweeps it to Stephen, who fumbled but had time to collect. He kicks to a contest. Sam Fisher was the target. McRae arrived, though, and knocked it away to the boundary. A throw in about 65 out from goal. Right half forward flank for the Dogs. Ball gets tossed back into play. Long taps. Red by Goods. Ball ricochets to pick, and luckily, round the body to within 20 metres. Dogs are deep into attack. Boyd comes out. Dems to fingertips, front of the pack, Dixon. Kick was charged down by Geary. Bottom pally there. Stephen working hard, knocks it away. Well done that time, McKenzie. Spun out of traffic neatly to Montagna to Weller. Got a runner, Armitage. Got to be touch number 35 for Blamey Saunders. Here's long to half forward. Bruce in the better position this time. He's going to have to have a quick shot around the body. Didn't get much purchase on it. It's coming back, is it? Sinclair over the top. Advantage, Payton. That's a St Kilda goal. Dunstan goals, margin now only 24 points. 7 6 48 the Saints, the Dogs 11 6 72. And that is all on the advanced hair clinic scoreboard, world leaders in hair restoration. As this one tightens up, North Melbourne kick a goal and near enough seal the game. Sam McClure. Yeah, they've kicked the last five goals, the Saints, the uh, last Bulldogs goal, the third minute mark of this quarter, which was to Jesse Stringer. They've just been on top in all areas. Look at the contested possessions. They're up plus four this quarter. Uncontested possessions, something that the Dogs have been dominating in that first half, plus ten to uh, the Saints. So they're beating the Dogs at their own game at the moment. That was a... And North Melbourne too. I'm assuming they've kicked away again. Yeah, Sean Higgins has goals, so and they're now up by 35 points, 12 and a half minutes left. Well, this is winnable. Almost four minutes left, third quarter, margin 24. They could be within a couple of goals at the last change if the Bulldogs don't watch out. Dogs win the ball. Goods swings it to half forward. It falls boundary side of a pack. McRae's got it. Wheels back inside on his left. Uh, dabbing little kick, but he hasn't made a very good fist of it. And it goes skidding to the boundary line for a throw in. Outside the 50, right half forward flank. And I didn't ever think I'd hear myself saying it in this quarter, but right now the Bulldogs need a goal. Yeah, 3.29 to three quarter time. Revolt halfback on the ball at the moment. Gets a little tap away. Cordy slow, illegal disposal. Surely seen by the umpire. Free kick to the Saints. As Weller takes it. Man free on the wing. Goes in that direction. Montagna has it. 
Now he wants to draw a man to Jack Stephen, just able to run a bit too easily now. Kicks it high and long at the back this time. Hickey lunges forward, tries to knock it to Revolt, picks it up, gives it to Hickey, needs a man alongside him. Sinclair, 40 out, gives it back Jack Stephen, high, trying to get it into the corridor. Uh, getting up there, Rovat. Fresh air shot from Bond and Pally. Dogs defence all under pressure at the moment. Sinclair tackled, misses the kick, 25 metres out. Kick around the body. That time, now the dogs are going to hold up. And Stringer, unbelievably closer to fullback, gets it, throws it onto the boot. But it should bounce up and the Saints can bring it back. Picked up there by Fisher. Can go wide. Effective. They control the football. Four to the wing. Dempster's got the ball. Margin now 24 points and the Saints are coming. Oh, bad option here by Dempster, but made good by Geary. Looks as though he'd have two against him. He took the mark. He gives to Armitage. Long ball to full forward. Bruce up. Waiting down. Sinclair. Goal. Saints within 18 points. This is unbelievable. Six goals on the trot. The Dogs 11, 672. The Saints 8, 6, 54, 27 gone. That's the advanced hair clinic scoreboard. I wasn't taking this revival seriously until no, about five no, minutes ago. Was up. And uh, it's quite clear now that the question mark's going to be asked to the Bulldogs. Can they keep up this pressure that they have been able to in the first five rounds and the first half of this game? Because this third quarter... St Kilda have turned the table. St Kilda are the ones putting the pressure on. Sam, you've got a great stat there. there were five goals this quarter from the Saints, all from Bulldogs turnovers. So we talked about the Bulldogs being the turnovers king. The Saints, as I mentioned before, yeah. are now beating the Dogs at the exact same game. And that, Brownie, you're spot on though. They're winning their balls in the centre now. So all Murphy and those players have got no licence off halfback. Out of the middle, pick and tries to shovel it. The Stringer unable to do so. Throws it in the air. Crammery there, holding firm Fisher, back in the middle of the ground, pick and handball, Cordy to Goods, Goods the left, Forder to Ward, a free kick surely to Geary, just dragged to the ground, seen by the umpire. They're throwing Stringer into the middle to try and yeah. create some enthusiasm. Just to half back he goes, and that mark, to draw a 50 metre penalty, no it doesn't, Jack Stephen, all of a sudden the dog's looking a little bit ragged. 28 minutes gone, Advanced Tech Clinic scoreboard, 72 to 54, 18 points the margin. North Melbourne well and truly home in Hobart over the Tigers as they go to the outer side, or should I say the city side, and the Saints just happy to control the football at the moment. It's 11-6-72, 8-6-54 St Kilda, and that is on the Advanced Tech Clinic scoreboard. Yeah, six well. goals to one in this quarter, and it's like they've split jumpers, split coaches. This uh, they've stopped here. The dogs and the Saints are just taking the game on. No pressure from the dogs. They work it back around past the uh, Bulldog goal front. The Saints and now they've got a two on one, and Montagna's able to break away and have three bounces. He reaches the wing, crosses the centre line, Kick. kicks beautifully to Sinclair, who marks, plays on, kicks towards the lead from Bruce. And he's taken a mark, 25 out, 45 degree angle. This was an intelligent kick from Joe Montagna. A lot of the times when you have two bounces and you're running at full pace, you can get a little bit muddled up. He had a player come and put pressure on him from the front, but he used all his experience and all his poise to just put the ball out in front of a teammate and made the kick just an easy one. Wouldn't have missed this last week, Bruce. He was on fire against the Bombers, kick five, but uh, hasn't yet hit the scoreboard. So the pressure's on. He's got, got a kick through it. Well, they're on a roll. And this, unbelievably, to cut it to 12 points. They are right in this game. And Bruce comes in and kicks the goal. This is incredible. At the commentary end, it's a sea of red, white and black celebration. Down at the Footscray end, it's turned deathly quiet. And you know what? I reckon down that end at half-time, the word flag might have been mentioned. <laughs> and what's great about this too is Revolt's hardly had an influence in this third quarter. Scoop, he's been playing on a wing uh, for most of it. Uh, as yet, he's had six disposals, but uh, you wouldn't have thought, you know, no inside 50s or anything like that. So it's all come from, you know, the younger players uh, through that midfield, you know, the pace of Loney, you know, Billings has been involved, Sinclair, Armitage now up to 37 disposals as well. Also, I just noticed three St Kilda players come off the interchange bench. No Bulldogs players went on there, down a rotation, as we know. So that's in St Kilda's favour the rest of the game. Margin now 12 points. We're almost at three-quarter time. Knock away that time, no good's a little toe puck. He's lost a bit of ground. Murphy tackled. Three quarter time cannot come quickly enough for the dogs. They lead by 12 points 11 672. St Kilda 9 6 
60. What was the biggest lead of the game so far, please? Sam, I know it was 49 at three at half time. Did the dog get it over 50? 55 points at the second minute mark of the third quarter when Stringer kicked the Bulldogs' last goal. It was a 55 point margin. Seven unanswered goals to St Kilda set up a brilliant finish here at three quarter time. With thanks to your local Toyota dealer. We got the close one time. I'm glad we're not in Hobart, even though I love it down there. North Melbourne, well and truly home there. 11 672 the dogs and killed a 9 6 60. This is 3RW Football. It certainly is incredible with thanks to your local Toyota dealer. All from Patterson Cheney Toyota, our match day sponsor. Huge Mother's Day sale this weekend. The dogs early in the third quarter had a 55 point margin. Three quarter time, the margin is 12 points. 11 672 to St Kilda 9 6 60. Before we do anything else, I'd need to get to Dr. Peter Larkins for the Sage Institute of Fitness. Call 1300 664 664. Become a personal trainer, Pete. Uh, yeah, look, uh, the dog's already in position. The Saints still in the huddle, so we've got a half a minute to talk while uh, Richo still talks to them. I mean, the biggest uh, injury story, Clay Smith, who's ruptured his ACL graft in the second quarter today, Tone, and will require another knee reconstruction, but that'll be his third go. Now, he did injure the knee in the third quarter, second quarter, was examined, went back on the ground, and his knee gave way on him. So, so clearly there was uh, obviously an injury in the first segment. And, and went back on and the graft has ruptured so uh, really sad news for a guy who's worked so hard in 2013 and 2014 I was outside the rooms at the end of the half time break and there were tears with the player but it also looked to me like Luke Beveridge himself had a red eye and a little bit of a tear as he was coming out, I think there have been uh, a lot of consoling going on Matthew Lloyd just before Tim Lane they averaged 25 tackles a quarter in the first and second time they had 8 tackles in that third quarter so the Saints lifted, the doggies dropped off dramatically, good stat the Bulldogs had four points in the bank. Suddenly, the bank vault has been left wide open. The Saints are coming. Two goals in it. First contest. Hasn't been won yet. Montagna's got it. Dispossessed to the ball. Armitage goes in like a frenzied man. Longer in there as well. His hand pass didn't come out. Stolen for the Dogs by Dalhouse. He swings it in a half forward and Boyd hung on to a mark. He didn't know he had it. It had dropped almost to waist height by the time he got his hands onto it and it stuck long enough for Justin Schmidt to give it the nod. The man on the mark is 48 metres out and Tom Boyd, who missed a couple of sitters early, faces a, a little moment of destiny here because this is the stabiliser the Bulldogs need early in the last from outside 50. It's fading right off the boot and it's been marked on the scoreline by big ace Cordy between the goal and the behind post. So, still a scoring chance. What does the big bloke do? I think he's going to go on the left, is he? Oh, he's dangerous. Sort of, he's he's not, dangerous a ruckman doing Not this. built like a nimble-footed goal sneak. He's going to come out and try and drop it on the left and wobble it through, and he oh. does. He's done it brilliantly. He's done it as though his name's Lloyd, <laughs> and he kicks the goal, and the Bulldogs have a cushion. They're 12-6-78 to 9-6-60. It's a good guy's goal of the day. Oh, that first goal was going to be massive. It comes back to six points or 18 points. Just gives them that bit of breathing space. I'd love to know what Beveridge said to him at three-quarter time. Did he spray them or is he not that type of coach? But uh, Tom Boyd, he's had four disposals, four contested marks. That tells you He's got to learn to get off his man better and find an easier way to get a disposal. So still yet to kick a goal, but great to see him involved and create a contest there. Nathan Brown, how do you see it? 18 points lead to the Dogs. Well, it's a big blow for the Dogs, and now St Kilda need to really counter-attack and try and throw everything they can in the next five minutes. For 13 RACV, 18 points. The Saints got it back to 12 after trailing by 55 in the third quarter. Stoppage, middle of the ground, around the grounds, late down in Hobart for the AFL Premiership Club. And it is North Melbourne up by uh, 41 points, 16, 12, 108 to the Tigers, 9, 13, 67. Bontempelli does the ruck work. There's a lot of holding taking place. It's a dog's free kick on tipping. And Dixon, middle of the ground, hung on to by Armitage. And those numbers for Armitage today have been superlative. 
yep. uh, for Blamey Saunders here. 37 disposals. He needs 11 more disposals to break St Kilda's all-time game record for disposal count. Uh, you do have that person who has it as he goes to Dalhouse. Jack Stephen had 47 against Fremantle last year. So Dalhouse to Johannesson. The pass is good. Sharp leap. Brett Good's got it between wing half forward and goes long for the Dogs. Swings at the full forward. Stringer in front. Couldn't mark. Ball Morning. ends at the goal square. No one there. Honeychurch off the ground goal. And the Bulldogs have kicked two in the first three minutes of the quarter. And it's back out to four goals. 13 6 90, 84 rather, to 9 6 60. That is on the RACV scoreboard. Well, it was a clear pattern. Whoever wins the clearances in this game at the moment is going forward and is likely to score. The Saints dominated that area in the third quarter. We're able to get it inside 50 more often, kick seven goals. The first two clearances of this last quarter have gone the dog's way. They've gone inside 50 and two goals. We to see if it's a maturity thing. Obviously, they did have the Sydney Swans last week in a bit of a, a, a bog in wet conditions. But just wonder if they've gone asleep there for a period. A young team, they just thought it was going to happen. Let's see if they can run all over the top of the Saints in this last quarter. So it is, Cordy. The tap. Hunter tries to get onto it. The sub for the very unfortunate Clay Smith. Another one to Armitage. The kick to the wing. Talia leads in the race. Jack Stephen, the quicker though for the Saints. Billings arrives as well. First two goals go to the Dogs. They lead by 24 points, but the Saints inside attacking 50. Hickey knocks it down. Front of the pack, bottom. Pelly read it beautifully. Gave it to Dixon. Spears a pass. McRae, defensive side of the wing on the city side of the ground, takes it. 13 RACV scoreboard. For all your business insurance needs, the Dogs 84, St Kilda 60. They go backwards, the Dogs. Murphy involved. And now there's a chance. Johannesson, who's run and dare and bounces, been terrific. Broke a man. Oh. Broke another one. Two bounces, spearing passes a beauty. Oh. Sharp lead string has got a 55 out. Does he go for glory? Kicks it high, top of the square. Boyd underneath it, St Kilda defence. Running it through that time, Webster concedes the behind, Matthew. 25 points to margin, 85 to 60 on the 13 RACV scoreboard. Yeah, let's see if they can keep it in there. there. We wouldn't have seen this in the first half where they've got a man out, St Kilda, but good to see Johannesson run again. That's what they need to do. Saints bring it in long and wide, and Stephen Marks virtually above the boundary line. He chips inside to Schneider. Back in defence of 50, and he goes to full back, and Delaney... And out the other pocket to Roberton, who sweeps the hand pass forward to Fisher. And another one onto Armitage as they draw Bulldogs and keep releasing men further afield. Now to Nunes, who 50. takes a mark. And a 50-meter penalty against over Lee, mark. who just, in his enthusiasm, cribbed over. And that will bring the man on the mark back to the 50. Nunes with the footy. He gets a lead from Hickey, and he finds him with a good pass. And Hickey's marked at 40 out, but out on a 45-degree angle on the left half forward flank. Kicking to the Footscray end goal, and the Saints need one now, having got back to within two goals. They've seen the Bulldogs slip away again to a 25-point lead. A goal here, though, and this game is very much alive. Hickey, a slightly awkward left footer, on its way. Not a bad kick off the boot, but it's across the goal face and forced through for a behind. So the margin exactly four goals, 13-7 to 9-7 on the RACV scoreboard. Uh, take a score, please, for the AFL Premiership Club. Best seats, best matches guaranteed with the AFL Premiership Club. 35-point lead to North Melbourne, 16-13-109 to Richmond, 10-14-74. Murphy brings it in after that, and killed a point, came off hands and rolls out of bounds. Between wing and half forward on the Medallion Club side, Matthew. Probably about 65 around, 70 around from the Saints goal. Just, they don't want another brave loss here, St Kilda. They need to try and go for it. You know, you'd rather lose by an extra two or three goals here. By trying to win, that's what they've got to do. They've won the stoppage, ends up with Schneider. Kicks to the top of the square, Bruce between two. Oh, back of the pack, chance for Billings. The quick snaps on the cards, round the body. Oh, yes, he has. Well what done. a good goal. Wonderful snap, Jack Billings. His second, both top draw. And that is a good guy's goal of the day. So it's back to a three-goal lead to the Dogs. 13-7-85 the Dogs. 
but the Billings goal, his second, 10 7 67 on the 13 RACV scoreboard. It's a good setup down here. Nick Rewald said he was going to go third man up to Dunstan, and, and he just pointed him out towards the 50 metre mark. And the boundary throwing was a bit short, so it took the uh, the two ruckmen out of it. Nick Rewalt still pushed it out in front, in front of Dunstan, and an easy pick up inside forward 50. Bruce went up, didn't elect to try and take the mark, knew the Billings was the ground level, and just shuffled it down to him. He's the Saints' first multiple goal scorer of the day after uh, the first nine were shared around. Bulldogs win it out of the middle. It's uh, swung it a half forward. Number one able to mark Goods. Crumb to pack cleverly. Swings a bomb into within 30. Big pack. No one could mark. Falling ball covered by Robertson. Coming the other way, Boyd collared him. High. Free kick to St Kilda. Robertson wastes no time. Chips to Fisher. A hand pass releases Montagna off half back. Has a couple of bounces. Make it three as he almost reaches the wing on the dock side. Runs into a wall. Has to retreat to Fisher, who kicks under pressure. Kicks to a two-on-one. Or oh, might have been a push in the back there on Humes. It's not paid. A pack forms. And umpire Schmidt calls for the ball out on near the dock side wing. 85 to 67, game alive, dogs by 18. Final score, 35 point margin to North Melbourne. We'll get it in a moment's time. The Saints win the, the stoppage oh. to half forward, off hands. Schneider inside 50, the handball's on. Chance for Billings, number three, no. Oh, that was the chance to get it to within two goals yeah, running Bruce in. On. 10-8-68, the Saints trail by 17 points. The dogs, 13-7-85. The 13 RACV, as it'll be Lockie Hunter marking the kick, and I'll check that full-time score, please, for the AFL Premiership Club, please, Sam. 35-point victors, North Melbourne, 16-13, 109, Richmond, 10-14-74. Hunter's kick doesn't quite reach the wing. Geary's got the ball, he's brought to ground. Picked up, though, by Dixon for the Bulldogs. A kick to the wing. Desperate times, Pickens got it. He gives to Boyd. Clever control kick. Finding Honeychurch, has a man forward, just... Didn't feel as though he had the freedom to kick the ball to him. Goes back to Dixon, whose kick is short. And it is chopped off and well marked by McKenzie. The take from the young fellow, isn't it? Between fullback and halfback, it was indeed. His kick not great, but it'll come off. To Revolt. Got to go back closer to fullback. Bouncing. Dunstan's got it. Oh, oh and he kicked the ball into the padding <laughs> of the post. It wasn't deliberate. <laughs> and it's a three-goal lead, 18 points again. 86 to 68, 10-8. To 13 8, the dogs lead. Nunes marks the quick kick in. Dunstan, who started it, ran to receive the handball to the wing. The ball goes. Boyd provides the spoil. McRae, Revolt, see the ball to the boundary line. So the dogs hold it up in their attacking half, but a long way from goal. 13 RACV scoreboard. It's 13 8 86, the dogs. 10 8 68, the Saints. And Tim, plenty of time to run. We've only gone 10 minutes, final quarter. Bontempelli, third man up here. Couldn't get the spring, though, to get a hand onto it. Montagna's got it for it. St Kilda. A hand pass to Armitage, who got himself into trouble. The line is there as his friend, though. And he manages to take the ball over without appearing to do it deliberately. And yet it was his only intention. I reckon there'll be another throw in the dog side of the wing. So ball tossed into play. Hickey and Roughhead. Hickey the sideways tap, Armitage, magnificent, dominant today, won it, handball, McKenzie's got it, bounced through the middle, can he find a target or go for glory from 80 metres out, Bruce back of the pack, Billings to Ruck and Rove it, and oh, it's touched on the line, it was going through, Talia makes the save. Jack Billings lifting brilliantly in the last quarter. His numbers please for the day for Blamey Saunders here. 16 disposals going at 67%. What, what about last quarter inside 50, Sam? Because it still feels like St Kilda yeah. looked a better side apart from those first few minutes. Five all the inside 50s this quarter. Dogs are, uh, you can almost say, hanging on by the skin of their teeth. Johannesson plays on kicks long. The ball is fisted to the boundary by Webster of St Kilda for a throw-in. So they put the ball back in dispute in their attacking half. About 70 metres out, left half forward flank. As they go to the Footscray end, throw in. Brought down by Roughhead for the Dogs. And taken by Rovan, who twists and turns and then swings it very high to the wing. Dempster, a third man. What a lovely mark. He knows when to mark and when to spoil. He took that beautifully. He goes oh, for he's missed his target. In the corridor, that's dangerous. Wood picked it off. Gave it to McRae, back to Wood, now to Dixon, can't go forward, has to retreat to McRae, got to get his kick right here, 
He goes down the flank, hoping for Stringer. Didn't hit him cleanly, and it's taken away from him by Delaney. A hand pass to Geary. Saints ball, and now up the wing to Revolt. You can't run on, but just at the moment, Matthew St Kilda, even though they trail by three goals, look like they've got all the run. Oh, Stringer looks gone. Brownie touched on it. He doesn't play out games. Well, he looks gone. He's struggling behind the play. The Sydney game, I just keep thinking about it. 17 Took points. A lot out of them. 17 points. The Dogs lead by, but the Revolt pass found Weller along the City side. Well, still to half forward at the ball goes. And the mark taken by Loney. Loney's kick inside 50. Brewster B2. Bond and Pally. Oh, almost a run onto the quick clearing kick by Cordy. The Saints, though, should have been a high contact. It is. St Kilda free kick. Webster coming through. Errant arm by Cramery. He can go wide. Have a direct dial. Not quite a direct shot at goal. Long kick that time. I think it's McKenzie. Oh, Thumpingly man. long. Oh, what a goal. Good hit, didn't he? What a magnificent goal! Good guys, goal of the day from 60 metres. 11.975, it is now 11 points the margin in favour of the Dogs. 13.886 the Dogs, 11.975 the Saints. Jack Billings. It was Billings, my apologies, my apologies. As it is 11 point mark, where are they they getting this from, uh, Nathan? Well, they're getting it from extreme pressure through the midfield. They're controlling the game at the moment. As Lloydie discussed before, Stringer stopped. Tom Boyd can't get off his man at the moment. Murphy's through the had mid- five since quarter time, Brown. Through the midfield, Bonton Pally's been shut down. Hasn't had a lot of it. They don't have that running carry. Haven't seen Stevens with the ball. Johannesson with the ball. Streaming off half back, so they've just stopped to a run. St Kilda are just killing them all over the ground at the moment. Billings but, could very easily have four goals in this last quarter. He's kicked two and he's had two other shots. In but, saying that, St Kilda still need to take the game on now. It's still two goals, so they still they can't start to slow the game down and think, OK, we're back on even kill. They've still got to take the chances they've been taking. Quarter about half, oh, halfway gone. There's a free kick to St Kilda. You'd almost be on them right now, and they waste no time. Schneider comes by to receive. Skidding kick into the 50 was poor. Ball comes loose. Ground level ball. Prizing it out was uh, a, pick, a pick and he couldn't quite take it though. And the Saints are back in with a shot. Billings at ground level. Bond and Pelly though got his hands onto it. Little underground hand pass towards Kramer. He can't escape. There's a pack. There's a ball up. It's between centre and half forward for the Saints who trail by just 11 points. 15 minutes gone in the last. 86 to 75. The Saints are coming. Maybe Bond and Pelly's got to do something quiet day to day. The Dogs win it from the stoppage. The ball at half forward. Dixon toe pokes it in front of himself. Getting back there first. Dempster loses it. Oh, picked up by Fisher. Handball back into trouble into the corridor. Dempster's over the ball. Got to try and handball it away. The Dogs providing the pressure. Geary arrives though for the Saints. Can come out wide. No, oh, this really opened up now for the Saints. Armitage for touch number 40. 11 points they trail. Boy. Two bounces, draws a man, handball over the top. Montagna's got it. Armitage runs to receive, 65 metres out. Draws a man, goes wide of the boundary. Billings on the left boot to yeah. square it up. He's done it beautifully. Not a mark paid. Clearing kick that time then. The dogs get out of trouble. Row back the kick down towards the wing. Bouncing ball, Saints with the numbers yet again. Mackenzie, the handball, Montagna gives it to Webster and he breaks a man and goes long for the Saints. Saints with a serious sniff. Long high ball to the forward pocket. No one can mark. It's out to the boundary line. Bruce desperately tries to keep it in play with a swing of his left boot. But the ball eluded him. It's over the I, line. If I was Alan Richardson now, I'd be getting Rewalt back on. I'd be getting him out of the goal square so they've got somebody to kick to who can win in this game. Saints, Saints he's up to 42 disposals. Saints looking for a goal to be within a kick from 55 points down. Throw in. Schneider knocks it, but straight to Murphy. The skipper for the Dogs. Hand pass to Cramery. Hand pass to Bond and Pelly. Hand pass to McRae, who sweeps a hand pass inside to Goods. Slips around a tackle. Gives to Pickham. Hurried, panicky kick. Not into a bad spot, but Longer got there ahead of Cordy. And he gives to Fisher, who goes out wide to Sinclair. He marks on the wing, and the Saints build again. Sinclair's got the ball. Trailed by 11 points to Saints, but coming home the better. 30-metre pass effective. Found its way to Hickey between wing half forward on the city side. Saints going to the Melbourne Remand Centre into the ground. 86 to 75. 13 RACV scoreboard. A little one to Stephen. Goes out to Loney against the boundary line. Passes good. Billings again. The man of the moment's got it. Half forward right. Hard against the boundary line. 
but he has just hit him so yeah. sweetly today. Confidence must be up, Matthew. Oh, it is. I don't want to keep talking about what the dogs aren't doing because the St Kilda side have been magnificent after half time, but the amount of guys for the Bulldogs who can't run is staggering. To get it under a goal, it's a tough shot. 45 out against the boundary line. Not going to be a score. It's right in front of the St Kilda goals. Off hands. Oh, oh Sinclair arrives for the Saints and goals! Jack Sinclair from nowhere read the ball from the pack and it's now a five-point game. 13-8-86 the Dogs, 12-9-81 the Saints on the 13 RACV scoreboard. Still eight minutes to go too, Tony, but the Western Bulldogs would be devastated with that bit of play. There was no one there with the big fist. It was on the goal line, nobody down, nobody on Sinclair. This ball just needs to be killed. As a defender, that ball needs to be killed. It just lands in a dangerous area. Sinclair on his own. Big defensive holes there for the Dogs. Scoot McClure for Blamey Saunders. The biggest margin was 55 points. I know I'm testing you, but has the St Kilda Football Club ever come from that far back to win a game? Once, 55 points in 1937 against Hawthorne at the Glen Ferry Oval. Oh, very handy. From the ball up, Dalhouse has got it. Lost it. Cordy soccers it to the 50 for the Dogs, who now are definitely hanging on by the skin of their teeth. Bond of Pelly looks for a three. He doesn't get it. Saints are out. Armitage runs forward from the centre line. Kicks well. Hickey marks it. 65 out. Left flank. Quick kick is good as he finds Loney Hickey's near the boundary. Right. 45 he's been good out. this last quarter. Playing all right. Loney with the man on the mark at 45 or 6 is out in the gutter right now. He has this shot from 50 metres to put St Kilda in front. He's a left footer. It's the bad side. It's across the goal face, near the behind post, revolt up. It falls off hands over the line, throw in right forward pocket. The Dogs by just five points, having led by 55. Seven, eight, eight, seven minutes, 18 seconds to go. Ray White, countdown clock, and St Kilda have got it at the right end. Can they take an unlikely lead from this stoppage? Longer the tap, clearance to Goods. The handball was behind Pickin and turned over against the boundary line. Jack Stephen just throws it onto the boot. Loney, the little man there between two. Dogs defensive mark. Taken there by Eastern Wood. 86 to 81. Short and wide to Hunter. Still in defensive 50 for the Dogs. Dr Peter Larkins for the Sage Institute of Fitness. They yeah, obviously fatigue playing a big factor here. The Dogs are not running as much as you say, but also the Saints tiring at this stage, Tony. Oh, and, and Tony, they have to kick at least two more goals, in my opinion. They're five points up. St Kilda are coming hard. They can't afford to just chip the ball around. They have to score again. 6.38 left on the Ray White clock. Dogs by five points. Rough hit. The kick to a contest on the wing. Cordy, great mark. What Takes it. Mark. Terrific mark from behind Big Longer. Of course, Cordy's not small. He's between half-back and wing. The Bulldogs need a goal or two to make this game safer. Kick towards Boyd. Can't mark it. Comes to the back. St Kilda with the numbers, though. Delaney feeds to Bruce down in the back half. Kicks into the corridor and Stephen behind the centre. Does a 360 and then kicks and overshoots. And Easton Wood takes his second important mark in the space of about two minutes. He's between half-back and centre. 21 yep. minutes gone, the Dogs by five points. Yep, and it was 55 early in the third quarter, but St Kilda for all the world looked like they're finishing the better. Johannesson to the wing in a contest. Delhouse goes it at one-handed in a contest. Three on two, Saints defensively the number. Geary, handball, Delaney, another one to Fisher. Murphy doesn't quite commit, forces him to go wide. That is clever stuff, Rob Murphy, because the handball in the finish, Nathan, ran along the there it was. ground. The dogs, the dogs issue at the moment is they've got no run from behind. All game they've had run from behind. The times in this last quarter, they're just chipping the ball around and they're having to go sideways and long, which they don't want to do. Five and a half minutes left on the Ray White countdown clock. Well done, Dunstan. Prized the ball out to Stephen. Long ball in the Bruce direction. Two against him and it spills boundary side for a throw in at the 50. Left half forward. Oh, I look at this forward line of uh, Dixon, Boyd, Stringer, they just cannot hold the ball in their forward line like we saw in that first uh, first half. So it's like a pinball machine out of there. Tossed in at St Kilda's half forward. Revolt took it from the ruck. Got it to Stephen. Drew the high contact. Free kick to the Saints. 55 out. Oh, what does he do? He's going to get the little legs pumping. 
open up and try and spear a pass, and he did it! What a magnificent pass, and on the lead, Hickey, 30 out for the Saints, dead in front to put St Kilda in front, and I asked the question before the kick, Sam, it is more than kickable. Have the Saints led today? No. No. <laughs> Sorry, just checking Thanks. time. They have, Thanks, Sam. They have, have never led. So, no, they had 30, yeah, 30, 30 seconds in front of the start. That was it after 30 seconds. This to put the Saints in front by a point. Hickey from 30. They're in front. 39.87, the Saints. 13.8, 86. The Dogs. The RACB Business Insurance Scoreboard. Check the clock, Matthew. Ray White countdown clock. 4.21 to go. And... Uh, You'd like to be on St Kilda. Yeah, you would give us that record, Sam. This would be the fifth biggest comeback in AFL VFL history. Only four bigger. We know, Lloyd, you were involved in the biggest, and you kicked nine. This would be the fifth biggest one in AFL VFL history. And now you see space everywhere. So the Dogs have thought we've got to kick a goal too. So they've gone back to their normal structure. And looks like that'll suit the Saints, you would have thought, because as we said, they are running all over the Western Bulldogs. St Kilda in front from 55 points down along of the tap. Montagna can't take it with him. Bontempelli collects, kicks the Bulldogs forward. Dixon can't mark. At the spill is McRae. A little hand pass to Dalhouse, who straightens up, gets a good look at the front half, kicks to Stringer, can't mark, fell over. Nunes for the Saints, gives to Schneider, off to Dempster, back to the defensive goal square and Geary who takes the safe mark. 24 minutes gone. St Kilda beaten by two points last Sunday. Lead here by a point. Geary's kick didn't get the travel from the side. Dalhouse knocks it out of bounds. Ball to be tossed in. 52 around from the Dogs goal. See what's been a move from Alan Richardson in the second half as Rewalt playing mainly on the ball has opened up the forward line. Then Bruce has been down there. But Hickey's played the majority of this second half in the forward line and he's done an okay job. Cordy the tap, Bond and Pelly knocked it over the top, McRae against the boundary line round his body, coming through Schneider can't get it, close to the boundary line, Webster slow, taken out of bounds how does the umpire see it? This is better tone, much better from the Dogs, it's taken them to go down, to get back to this level of effort, and that's what they'll need to win it. 13 RACV scoreboard Saints 87, Dogs 86 stoppage, ball thrown in, 35 around from the Bulldogs goal. A score to square it up, Bond and Pelly Almost Ooh. escaped, brought down by the leg, but it was above the knee in the umpire's estimation. Ball's gone out on the fullest and killed a free kick to be taken by Dempster. Out of the back pocket, he's about 30 around from the behind post. Now, does he kick to a contest? He does. He goes long up the line. Cordy's there, longer there too. No one can mark. Falling ball. The Saints are going to extract. Armitage to Rebolt. The champ runs for his kicks. Poor. Still a chance. Two on one. Collected by Billings. He's the last corner hero. He goes for goal. He drills it. Jack Billings has kicked three in the last quarter. And St Kilda lead by seven points. With three minutes left. 14.993 to 13.886 on the RACV scoreboard. Tell you what's killed the dogs in this second half has been St Kilda's ability to win the ball from the clearance and be able to run with a chain of handballs. They win again here through Armitage. He's done it all day. Rewalt on the run. A scraggly old kick forward, but the forward line's open. Bulldogs players don't keep their feet. Billings keeps his head and kicks an easy goal, but it's been all about the Saints being able to get the stoppage win and start the game forward to centre rather than in the defensive 50. Still enough time to come back for the Dogs. Three minutes on the Ray White clock, but it's seven points. Another touch to Armitage. Handball out as far as Bond and Pelly throws it onto the boot. Centre half forward. Can the Dogs come up with the ball? Rove out over it. He's unable to. McKenzie battles hard for the Saints. It's 55 out from the Dogs goal. There's a stoppage coming up. 2.43 left. St Kilda 93. Dogs 86. The Dogs led early in the third quarter by 55 points. There's been a 62-point swing around the Saints' way. They lead by seven points. Cordy taps it down. Free kick coming. And off the ball, I think it is, Tim. It's going to go to the Dogs. It is Bunch of Pally. What's he do here? Does he bomb long or does he try and find a lower target? He's going the long bomb. He is 65 out. 
Oh, it's not really the result they want because it's landing almost on the scoreline and defenders love that. They just hammer it through for a minor score. There is a goal in it, 14-9 to 13-9, and that just adds a new dimension. The draw right now very much in the frame, 2 minutes 20 to go. So Montagna to bring it in, he'll go wide, he's got a man too easy. Oh, Revolt takes it, he'll know what to do. 2.17 to go, Ray White clock. We've gone 28 in the last quarter, St Kilda 93, Dogs 87. As Revolt, high to the wing, massive pack of players on the city side. At the back, Talia, high handball. Wood's been terrific, handball over the top, tries to get Talia. Can he thread a handball? No, unable to. Read neatly by Loney, they're going to get out of trouble. Steven, the defensive handball, back to Hickey. Hickey isn't killed, a kicks to half forward. Billings oh. again, what a magnificent last quarter. Everyone said, Matthew, that this boy can play. This is his quarter that stamped him officially, I would think. Oh, yeah, and it's tough playing that small forward role, but uh, he had a quiet first half, but unbelievable he's been in this last A lot of St Kilda players out here. The dogs need to man up, yeah. or this minute 30 is going to whittle away very quickly. Six-point lead to the Saints, and in slow playing a team, they've got it on the wing in Fisher's hands. And the clock ticks down to a minute 20. Oh, Fisher on the wing, and he's soaking up as many of those seconds as he can. And he chips the little ball to Stephen, who marks it still out he on the wing. He can go backwards again if he wants to. 70 seconds left. The Dogs not managing to man them up. Back Cremory to without a man. Rovat without a man. It is ticking down to a minute. Some kill the lead by a goal. And again, Fisher takes his time. Doesn't no one stands kick, the yeah. mark as the Dogs try and get back and cover every base. Now a long ball to a contest. It comes to the back and uh, uh, Johannesson who bangs it forward. Bontempelli there, Fisher with him, but it's gone out on the full. So it's a St Kilda free kick. The Saints with just 44 seconds to hold now to score close to the biggest comeback victory in the club's entire history. So the ball to the wing, they need a grab and they've got one, the Saints. Long enough. On the city side wing. And now there's no hurry. 29 seconds. Absolute worst result for the Saints is it's two points. They lead by six. High contest. Half forward. Oh, Hunter with uh, mistimed his lead. Do uh, they pick it up. The pass is on. Well done, Hickey. Pass is great. And on the lead, Bruce, and they're going to win the Saints. And have a listen to this. Should have won last week. Going to win this week. And a whole new set of St Kilda heroes have announced themselves today to the AFL. This for the absolute icing. They've won at the Saints by six points. One of the greatest comebacks in AFL VFL history. We have witnessed it today. All praise to St Kilda. Bruce to make a good thing of it. He doesn't matter anyway. It missed left one behind. What a magnificent win. So many heroes, so many wonderful players, magnificent team effort. But all praise to young Jack Billings. What a magnificent last quarter with three goals. Four for the match. The Saints by seven points. Oh, when the Saints...